hello friends welcome to the rest api course in this course we will be learning how to automate our rest apis using the java now let's in the starting study what actually our web services let me tell you with an example okay i go to a website let me make my trip.com so this is a flight reservation website in this website you can select the date and time you want to book a flight that is international domestic for example i want to reach to mumbai okay from my current location and let me flight hotel okay so let me search flight and hotel okay uh, let me fill up the details check in one day only one night okay no you have to click on flights okay one city way i want to go from uh, delhi okay delhi to let's say mumbai and the departure date is let's say today's date and search flights okay so it's searching the flights and you will get a list of flights that is flights which are sponsored by indiegogo flights by vistara by go india jetway spicejet air india so all these flights now what actually these are these are separate websites spicejet is hosting its website details go air is hosting its website details on their website book my show is just showing them okay it's not scheduling the website spicejet is scheduling its own websites we don't have any flights for make my trip make my trip is a website by which you, which helps you to book flights from various vendors so how the make my trip is communicating this website details so it is done through web services as soon as i enter the details here back here when i click on search make my trip hits all the vendors okay it asks it one of its apis go and ask the air india that do you have any flights from delhi to mumbai for this date it goes and asks jet airways do you have any flights from delhi to mumbai departure date is for one adult so similarly make my trip web services go and ask all these vendors and they reply back okay if i show you more uh, good in a good way this is your make my trip and this is your services uh, okay so this is make my trip okay this is your air india this is your spice jet and similarly others go air kingfisher okay so when you book a reservation a request is sent from a web services request is sent from make my trip to these vendors in a form of web services so all the data is processed by the respective vendors and they send a response okay response back to make my trip and make my trip displays on their website so they communicate with the help of request and response so this is how in actually the internet works if you visit google.com yahoo.com 
so they are google does if you search anything google is not showing the content of itself it is when you search something it show links of the another websites how it is done it is done through apis now let me tell you what web services this was the web services we talked about in terms of websites now there can be scenario this is your atm machine okay this is your uh, sdfc bank atm machine and these are the servers for let's say sdfc icici and access bank so whenever you come and enter your uh, debit card or getting some cash what these will do they will send a response to an hdfc server in a form of web services and will verify your information and the amount available and at the same time the response will come to the hdfc bank yes the amount is available and the cash is dispensed so in a similar way if you went to an hdfc atm and uh, holding an ici uh, debit card now this implementation is done in some language these are done in some, some language icic bank implementation done in some other language so they cannot communicate to each other okay. this was in java this was on, on on other platform so they cannot communicate but with the help of web services they have a common web form because this icic bank platform also understand web services and we have also make understand hdfc bank web services so this is the easier way by which they can communicate web services you can say it's a medium for communication i know hindi you know chinese so two persons cannot communicate but now a person comes who is having the knowledge of english so both of us are being taught english that how the english speaks and now the person with the hindi language and the person with the chinese language are communicating directly in english so the english guy is serving as web services he taught both of them how to speak in english and now you can communicate with each other so this is the role of web services you can communicate against various other platforms because we know that uh, you can read java the data from a database using java you can connect to sql server you can connect to oracle but what about a big data if i talk about main frames java cannot fetch the data so but how this can how we can fetch the data using the web services so in a simple terms web services is the mode of communication between two platforms data is exchanged between two platforms or two websites with the help of apis or we call them as web services when we talk about websites the when the name come web services when the communication is done on one side at least there should be a website so then we call them as web services that's all i think you have understood the web services part in the next session we'll be studying about the various types of web services available hello friends in this lecture we will be studying about the type of web services available so there are two types of web services one is soap web services and another is rest so in this session we will be concentrating what are soap web services so when the web services started soap was the basic one normally old applications you will be seeing all use the soap web services but with the coming of mobile industry into boom and uh, the usage of web services started to a large extent the rest web services are being used or we may say them as rest apis
normally we prefer them as APIs instead of web services before soap was used but now all of these formation is done on to rest services that's why we have performed or made this course on rest apis yes some applications are being used in soap apis only but they are now converting them into rest web services that's why we prefer you to automate and learn the rest or uh, apis automation instead of soap ui automation one more thing when we talk about soap and rest there are a lot of tools available like soap ui and another as per a personal uh, suggestion these tools were helpful in, in when we are automating the soap services but as we come to rest services i don't think that buying of these tools is recommended you can simply automate the rest services using the java language at least i don't recommend buying a lot of money and buying the license for these tools you have made a better choice go through this course using java implement in your project and definitely a client would be happy you are saving him a lot of uh, money uh and you're doing the same amount of work when we talk about reporting a sector also there are third parties apis which can be integrated and re reports can be generated a fabulous reports can be generated yes we'll be covering those as well now coming back so it is important first to understand what are so web services so web services communicate uh, uh, when we were talking we discussed website 1 this is website 1 and website 2 now how they are communicating to each other in this tutorial we will be studying that the way by which these services are communicating to each other is through soap protocol okay this uh, rest and soap web services we normally refer them as soap protocol protocol means because there are set of instructions which are being laid there is a format by which both of these can communicate to each other it is not that the website say uh, is saying something and this website is understanding something no there are protocols laid that we will be sending data in such and such format these format meant specifies these thing so that is why we call them as protocols and the soap protocol as i said was they communicate in an xml language for example website 1 is an uh, application which needs calculator information that is addition that this is calculator application let me just show you here also that this is a website where you can find the soap web services you can google it also you can find various website uh, where the soap services will be available free for testing so similarly let us take one example here this calculator so we have a web services name at calculator this is your website and in a website we want to implement this calculator functionality in my website i don't want to implement calculator functionality why to implement when there are services available someone has already done so just get data from it you must have seen the weather applications normally nowadays every website is having a right side column showing the weather report now these all website are not getting the data they are not calculating the weather temperature or every city what they are is doing on their website they send a request to an api or to a website which is gathering all this data they said okay please uh, tell me the temperature of delhi and they respond back yes the temperature of delhi today is 44 degree celsius and they show on their website so these website are not calculating temperature of every city they are taking help of services and getting data from different website sometimes these services are free 
and sometimes are paid normally people are working suppose i have a weather company i i have set up in every city and i'm, I'm calculating the temperature so i am selling the services i say okay if you want the temperature of every city for every request i will be taking 1 rupee so this is how these companies are earning as well so both are profited this one is profited because they are not setting up temperature uh, calculation on in every city of the world okay and this is also a bad thing now they have multiple websites who want these information and they are getting they are getting earned so back again so in our case this is a website which needs a calculator functionality to be implemented it send a request of numbers which needs to be added let's say 2 or 3 to this api and this api responds with the result of 5 this is all done with the help of so protocol that is the xml documents this website once send an xml document to website 2 in a form of request then website 2 sends back the response to website 1 in a form of xml document known as response so let me show you uh, not uh, exactly but in simple how this we make this uh, request and response in xml so let me open a notepad suppose this is my request so there must be something like this addition opening tag this is the closing tag for addition now under the addition what i want to do i want to give two numbers want to add so this is my first number closing this first number and the second number let's say we will be adding two numbers 2 and 3 so this is how we have prepared a request we will be sending this we will be saving this at request dot xml on the desktop similarly a response will be sent that is sum and the closing sum and the added numbers Let's say two plus three. The result was five. Okay, and closing. Added numbers, and save this as response dot xml, and save this. so we have a request and response so this is the request if we open, open with okay so this was a request and this was your response okay so when webs you enter both the numbers in website 1 and click on send this type of information xml document is sent to website 2 website 2 processes and send this type of information back to 1 okay so this is how web services work now there is a term which comes that is wsdl now what is wsdl these two web services or we can say these two websites are communicating among them 
okay so there should be a predefined document now website 1 is not aware what website 2 apis or soap api so what this soap api is actually capable of doing website 1 does not know this is laid this is laid by this soap api in a document known as wsdl in WSDL document, they tell what this API is capable of doing. So these needs to be shared with website one in order to make a request. If we talk about this calculator and if we go to it, okay, you will find a WSDL document here. So downloaded it. Show the folder. Okay, open with. Let's see. So, and what? Uh, open with. Let's say a WordPress maybe. Mm, yeah. So it will open a document like this. This is the WSDL file. You won't be able to understand and uh, if you want to and we are not here to understand the SOAP UI in detail protocols. So you just need to be aware of that this is the WSDL file which needs to be shared in in order to send a request. In this WSDL file it is mentioned what type of services available how to send them etc. So when we are automating the SOAP UI when you are automating the SOAP UI we normally use tools because these WDLs are hard to understand but the what these tool does these tools automatically understands this WDL and it becomes very easy to send request so here the main capability of tool comes uh, like we say if we want to call it if you see if you want to call this API calculator API in this WSDL if you read this there will be two functions available add divide many and multiply so you can call all these functions in the API in the request API and the response will be sent to you so I just uh, go through again so protocol uh, it was used before now they are not so much being used they in this soap the request and responses are sent in an XML file and there is a WSDL file which must be shared between them it contains information of all the functions which are implemented by the API. I think that is the sufficient knowledge for SOAP. Now, in the next session, we'll be starting our REST APIs. Thank you. Hello, friends. So, in this session, we will be learning about REST APIs. In the previous session, we studied about SOAP UI. Okay. Now, there are some drawbacks of SOAP UI okay that uh, or we can say rest api is better on top of so U upi it is the way rest is in demand is we implement soap in xml so ex to implement xml is itself a lengthy task first thing the second thing is the wsdl file the way we write the code it's very lengthy because it is has to be as per wsdl the many functions which WSDL implements that for every activity there is a function in WSDL so if you want to hit a specific API you have to call that specific API as SOAP UI maintains or follows the WSDL so the security which is being established using the SOAP is very good but in case of REDS it is very free but using the rest it comes where you are very flexible to changes you can easily modify your apis okay it is very easy to use if i talk about soap more ways comes into the implementation of soap and rest i think this course is not into going the developmental side why the rest is being preferred over soap First, you just understand that yes, the rest is stateless. It does not stores the states. It is cacheless, cacheless. The information is not being stored, and there are many other benefits of SOAP. Sorry, REST protocol over SOAP protocol. 
now the soap is a uh, as we have uh, studied that soap can be implemented in xml similarly rest can be implemented in xml as well as json but 90 more than 90 percent rest is only implemented in json not xml because json is a very light architecture java architecture uh, when we were using soap the re we made this request in case of json it is very simple you have to write something addition first number To, so writing of code in JSON is very easy. There is no starting ending tags. And one more thing, conversion of JSON objects into Java objects is very easy. So implementation of REST API with the help of Java is also very easy. So that's why the REST is in demand. So in case of SOAP, we have seen that suppose there were functions add, delete, etc. So for every function if we want to call it we have to make a function here from the website if we want to call this function we will say add function and put the values into it. Okay this is how the soap works but in case of rest protocol we have only four functions. Now what these four functions let us stand with CRUD properties C R U D. Okay which states C for create, uh, R for read, U for update, and D for delete. So these are the good properties which are follow in HTTPS also, sorry HTTP in SQL. So similarly in REST create, we can do any create activity using the REST API using the POST request. We can read any data from the REST API using the GET request. Similarly, update can be done by PUT and delete can be done by delete. Any of the activity, and this is API. So, we can communicate with this API with only these four requests. Unlike the SOAP, we have to specify the name. Okay. So, you see in this, a lot of activities make easier. So that's why the rest is being followed. Now, let's uh, uh, simple uh, what these are actually post, get, put, delete are. Post is when to create some information. Let's say you are on a sign up page and you are putting some data into it. It will be saved on a server. That is, you are creating something is known as a post request get request when you want to fetch a request let's say i say uh, this command only when we were booking here and we click on search flights so what the search flight does it does not creating anything it is extracting the information from the different database and displaying to you it is extracting information it is known as a get request when we are getting something post when we are sending something to be saved put request put is almost similar to the post request but in post we were creating something while in put we were updating any information which was saved before like you created the account you sign up for the account it is a post request but when you are updating your email or password that request will go through the put request and this is the delete request as the name suggests it is for deleting something delete a product delete an account so rest apis follows these four requests only post get put delete now as we uh, we learned in soap ui we were having a wsdl document this was the document which was given by soap ui to the website so that he can make the commands and can send it. How this is done in case of REST? In REST there is no WSDL. What in REST does? Developers themselves prepare a document 
that this is the API, the description of it. This is the API, this is the description for it, how to send and receive it. Okay. In the API document, what they mention? They mention API name, API version. These are the minimum things which should be present. API uh, method that it should be a put or get request or something. It should be the API request, how the request would be sent. API response, how this API would respond. And the API description. So for all the APIs which are implemented by the developer, they will, for each API, they will give this information. To anyone who want to use these APIs. Case of SOF protocol, there is WSDL. While in case of REST protocol, there is no WSDL, but developers prepare a document name as the API documentation in which they have at least this basic information for every API. So as we have seen, uh, in case of so, we go to the calculator uh, web services. In your mobile, you have many apps. Now, of those apps, I can say uh, normally 20 or 30 percent of the apps are using your location. Okay, you they trace your location, or you can tap and your current location is searched. Now, every app is not uh, the every app is does not have the satellite mapping or this GPRS system, etc. No, what they do. The Google have exports its API. So this is the Google Maps. This is your mobile applications. Now all these mobile applications are showing Google Maps. This also, this also, this also. So how this does they, they are not implementing Google Maps. What this give is they send request to this Google Maps because Google Map has exposed these APIs. Exposed. APIs or we can say exposed REST APIs. So it get those information and this API responds back. This Google if we talk about REST is does not having a WSDL but it should have a document. It should have a document that what are all the APIs it exposed. Now let's search. Let me show you how this document is there. Let me take uh, Google weather. Okay. Google weather rest API documentation. Open weather map. So here you can see that these are all the APIs and they have given the API document for this API doc. You see? So they are in this they briefly send that by city name if you want to call the current weather data for any location by city name then you have to send a API like this city name. You can send it by city ID. So this type of documentation by geographic codes you can send uh, this will be the response and this is how the request you can send. So this is how the, the document which is prepared for using the REST APIs which is sent to anyone who want to use those services. Now this website Open Weather Map have exposed these APIs. Anyone can use these APIs, call these requests and it will respond. So this is how it works. So using the REST is very easy. They have just prepared a document everyone is using it. But in case of SOAP it becomes a very complicated. So that's why the world is switching for REST and uh, all those which have been using SOAP are moving to REST. But if we talk about security, yes, SOAP protocols are very secure. That was a brief introduction about the REST web services. From the next session, we'll be starting how to use web services and uh, how we work with web services, how to make an automation suit using the Java with the help of web services. Hello friends, welcome to this session. In the previous session, we learned about the REST APIs, what are REST APIs, 
how the rest apis are sent that is the crude properties through post cat put and delete these are the four functions available with rest apis during the teaching we need a real apis so that i can taught at how to automate those apis instead of developing my local apis and showing you so i will be using real apis real apis which are available online when you are testing when you are using these apis please make sure you are not bombarding these apis these apis are hosted by someone don't send unlimited apis to them or they will block your ip address just do only for testing purpose don't bombard those servers because for the sake of teaching i am using the real apis real rest apis which are available online in a first example we will be taking a weather api the api is hosted by openweathermap.org so in your website you want to show your current weather weather forecast so you can use the apis which are exposed by this website and you can show the weather reports now explore this apis so let's read what it says open weather api is simple clear and free we also have a high level of support please see our paid plans to access api you need to sign up with an apk fee if you are using a free or paid plan let's see the pricing also many times what the, these website do they make some uh, apis and they sell them like this open map report if you want to use them if you are in a per minute if you are making a 60 request then it is normal you can use freely but if you want to make more request payment plans if you want to make the more request so since we are teaching it uh, we will be using a free version because on it's only for education purpose so i also ask you don't bombard these servers because then they will be asking you for a paid plan and your server will be blocked your ip address will be blocked so in order to use these apis as mentioned here you need to give an api key api key is through which you are authenticated on the open weather map server now how to get an api key you need to just click on sign up okay and you have to make an account i have already made an account so let me log in enter your username and password okay and i am logging into the my account so here under api keys you will find your unique key here so copy it and save it into a notepad so with all communication with this website in the api key you need to enter this key with this key you will be authenticated as a valid user on their server and you will be given access to it let's go through apis now so as you can see here here are a list of apis which these guys have given that is if you want to the current weather report if you want 5 hour 3 hour forecast you want 16 day forecast weather stations air pollution so they have a number of apis exposed so let's start with the api get current weather data and click on api doc so this is the doc available so in this current it gives the current weather report now for getting all the current weather report they have given a various options that how you want to get a current weather report you want to get it by a city name then you can send this get request in the get request mention city name you want to get the current weather on basis of your city id you can give your city id here that is this is the url and in that you can add the parameter this parameter id you can get a set of ids from this location list of ids okay. you can get the weather report based on the locations your zip code with your country code and similarly others so these are the get request because what we are doing here we are sending some information and we pulling them data we are getting some information from this server using the rest apis so these are the get request and in get request we are appending parameters that is which city name which coordinates we want to find the information so these are the request these apis they work both on xml as well as json 
mostly json is used when we talk about rest apis so we will be keeping our tutorial to json as well it has given me the response what will be getting the response so it has given an example that we will be getting a response in a form of this so coordinates is the city coordinates in the weather section it's give the weather codes weather id weather main and it has explained all the responses that rain rain volume in last three hours clouds cloudiness so this is all the weather report so once you hit that api this api will be giving you all these informations you can extract the information which you want and you can work accordingly if you are having a website of let's say delhi my city delhi and, and from the city on the city you want to show information that uh, how is the weather that it is cloudy or not today so what you can do you can make a request to this website it gives this information you send a get request that uh, my get request delhi and it will have a response from this response you will fetch this the response is all is this data now from all this data you need only the clouds report so you will extract this data and you will show on your website yes weather of uh, delhi is cloudiness it is sunny etc so this is how the api works let's start making our first java project we will not be teaching here that you download this jars and uh, you can start coding no we'll be teaching you how we actually make api projects using maven and testng a main motive is share, to show that how industry is working with apis hello friends so in this session let's discuss about the maven now what maven is i will be talking about maven if uh, if you're talking about in from the testing point of view because what all i am teaching here is more or less related to test automation in uh, I'm not going into the development issues like if we talk about the SOAP and REST APIs also. So I'm only teaching, which is important as a testers, not as a developers. I'm not going into technicality that why REST is demand these days. Not the dev perspective, but from the testing perspective. So in the testing world, when we are working in an automation suit, we have to be dependent on various jars. Consider a scenario. there is a project this is your project and multiple testers are working on it tester 1 tester 2 tester 3 and they are having a set of jars like for first uh, uh, jar they have version 2 3 sorry for second version they have second uh, jar they have version 2.1 okay similarly for the others they are using the same jars now we are talking about three people but when we work on real projects they are more persons working on it now suppose this one file they release their new version and this tester was notified no before uh, that this version is released so he after the release he started using version 4 while all of these two are using version 3 later on a new version for this second api came and this person also started using version 2.2.2 uh, and 2.2 and this tester also started using version 2.2 while he was using version 1 only so and they were working according to it but when the system was integrated the test were failing because the test cases which he developed for this first jar was with version 4 while other was version 3 and similarly for the another jar file there may, there appears to be a lot of confusion that which tester is using which jar now another point is that we need to manually visit the website and download that specific jar so it is a very cumbersome process to maintain the jars the versioning of the jars among different testers so there comes a concept for maven so maven are the smart guys maven have their server this is maven and they said okay we have downloaded every jar every jar which is needed we have they have every jar plus every version version 1 version 2 so for every jar they have having versions when we make a maven project we have one file known as pom.xml file every tester 
instead of maintaining its version jar files they have access to this pom dot xml so in this pom xml what is written it is written that for this one version use version 3 for this second version use version 4.2 okay so every tester is given this pom.xml. When they start using this pom.xml, Maven fetches this version from the its servers and brings back to its local repository. Similarly for the another. In going period of time, if the new version came for this, if any of this tester updated this version, if any of this member updated this version, let's say version 4, then this new version will be downloaded from the internet and now every tester will be using local copy of version 4 only. So this is how pom.xml helps, how this maven helps. Now the testers don't need to think about what the another tester is using which version of jar file, no. Tester don't bother how to download and where to download these jar files, no. He has just one file in which he tells that okay for this jar file I will be using this version 1 and every tester will be then downloading that newest jar file. So this is the concept behind maven. So the real power of maven comes from pom.xml. How we can get this maven installed on your system? First of all if you go to command prompt and you type mvn and hit enter you will get this error that mvn is not a recognized as an internal or external command it means that maven is not configured on your system to do it you need to go to your browser and type download maven and click on enter so this maven official website will be open click on it and you can download this zip file when you click on download, I just did it few minutes back. So this is the file which will be downloaded. Save it to a location like this to be the location under software and unzip it. Okay, I will extract to this location only. Okay, delete the zip file. Now I want to configure its path. So go to the bin location of it and copy this location. Go to my PC uh, properties and in this go to advanced system settings and environmental variables. We need to set the environmental variable for this maven. Go under path and at the end after the semicolon type the path which you have copied and click on semicolon. Save it and close this. If your command prompt was open then Close it down and again open it. Open the command prompt again and type maven. So yes. So now it has not given an error. Instead it's saying scanning for projects etc. So it is not, not giving an error that maven is not a recognized command. It means that maven is properly configured on your system. Or you can also download the maven plugin in your eclipse. Just open your eclipse. Eclipse, uh, I think you must be aware of. Uh, Eclipse is the editing tool. It's a Java build tool. Uh, so download it. Type Eclipse download. Okay, this is the download section. And you can download this uh, Eclipse ID for Java e developers. So I have already downloaded it. When you open the first time, it will be asking for a new workspace. So let me make a new workspace and in the workspace let me make a new folder that is APIs okay and give the location of this API so a new workspace has been opened in Eclipse this is for the new workspace for the Eclipse if you go under file new and others and you will find a maven here if maven is there then it means that you have already configured maven in your eclipse if you don't then in that case go to help eclipse marketplace
and you type maven here and click on enter yeah so if you scroll like here eclipse in maven in integration with my eclipse that is luna so i have already installed it so it is giving me a option for update or install so you just click on the install and you will accept the terms and conditions and it will just install and your eclipse will restart to confirm this once maven has been installed you will get this maven option here go under this maven option and make a new maven project and click on next Okay, next, uh, next. So give a group ID here. I will give it that API testing activate ID com dot org dot API and click on finish. This is your project has been created, Maven project. So in the next session we will be start writing the test cases for API testing. Make sure you perform this build steps that you download the Maven, configure your Eclipse and make a new Maven project. Hello friends. So in the previous session we talked about creating a Maven project. So if you expand this project the structure would be like this. This is the main test is generally a folder where all our tests are kept. This is main. This is uh, mainly used for the development purposes. JRE system library, these are the Java libraries are stored. Maven dependencies include the jars which we will be downloading. And this is your pom.xml. In this, keeping the information for all the jar files which will be needing in our project. So let's delete this. We don't need JUnit. Just a second. Yeah. yeah. Now, for the first jar which we need is of test ng. You must be aware of test ng. If you are not, then uh, let me give you a brief introduction. You should know actually if you are going to project what actually the test ng is. If you don't know, you can go through the Selenium course. Uh, uh, you will find mine selenium course and you can learn the test ng and uh, all the testing framework in detail so test ng suppose uh, you are maintaining five tests it is very easier to maintain but if you want to keep thousand test cases then it will be very difficult to maintain the test case because if your manager says you at random that okay web hub execute the test cases which are our finance because there is a finance of api changes I will be at how to find out of those thousand test cases which are of finance. To help with our test automation to maintain our test we use test ng. So first of all we need to download its jar file. So the best way to download a jar file is just type maven and the jar you want to download test ng and click on enter you will find this maven repository i talked about there is a repository there is a server in which all the jars are kept so it is this click on this link and you will find all the versions this is the maven repository and you can find all the versions we want to work with this latest version so click on this you can download the direct jar file over here or you can download its dependency so let's download its dependency copy this and paste here under our dependencies section for working with the api automation there are a lot of jars available what i mean a lot of jars available is that uh, when we want to send a json request over the internet for sending that json there are a lot of uh, methods available you can send it by using jsoup library by jv library you can use http methods so there are a lot of libraries available but the best library which is available is the rest assured library which is given by jv so it is the library which is developed specially for testing of rest apis so definitely it is the best
and during the course when I will be teaching you will identify yourself yes it is the best because it follows the cucumber as we know that cucumber is the you can say is the most uh, talked courses these days what cucumber is cucumber is in top of TDD TDD is test driven development so BDD comes over TDD that okay testing will be done not as per the functionality or the code but as per the use cases writing of test cases with BDD is a real advantage in this you will be coding as BDD only wait for some time from the next session we will be actually coding and you will finding very good that we are coding in the English language like we write the sentences similarly we will be writing the code here we download rest assured so we write rest assured library and click on search so this is it testing framework we will be downloading the latest version copy its dependency paste it here correct the identification using control i with the rest assured we need two more libraries that is json path and json scheme validator they are needed to manipulating with the json path etc the first is the json path this is all the jar which is given by the jv jv has given the rest assured and similarly the json path Let me write here maven json its path okay this is the library Maven path this is the one yeah, it's 2.20 yeah this is the only it copy its dependency copy it and give it in your project control i to correct the annotation and the next library which will be having is maven mm -hmm. yes JSON scheme validator and it should be also by JV. This is the one which is given by JV. Yes, this is the one. Copy the dependency. Why did not pick? Because that was not given by JV. We need the libraries which are given by JV. Copy this and keep under your projects correct the annotation so as soon as I click on save you will see this option coming in bottom sign the progress what this progress means that at least when you're using your first time make sure you are connected to internet what this is doing it is downloading all these jar files in your local system you have just given the name okay as you click on save maven will read these jars available uh, or not on your local system if it not then it will contact the maven repository and it will download all them so that's the reason it is downloading all of them it will be taking some time depending upon your internet speed now where they are actually keeped on your local system so let me show you the path go to this pc c under users to web hub and there is a folder created dot m2 so you can find all those libraries here okay they are being downloaded like uh, under org you will find test ng okay we downloaded test ng this is 6.9 version a 6.9 version is downloaded here so this is the location where all the jar files are downloaded it's giving bash dot to this these all rest assured it is currently downloading the rest assured jar files so let it download So here comes the advantage of maven and using pom.xml I'm not uh, concerned at uh, how to download these jar files if in next case a new uh, jar file of 6.9 comes 6.10 here I just download the 10 and click on save so it will be automatically downloaded on my system let it download we need to work with test ng as well we download the test ng file so what working of test ng we need a test ng xml file so i have here i will paste it here so first the downloading has to complete then the another operation can be performed so let us let me pause the video till it is completed
okay so all jars has been downloaded this is the maven and we downloaded our test ng jar file to work with test ng we have this test ng xml here so i will come to it so in order to pom to select this test ng xml you have to write some plugin i have already with me so you have to copy this build and you have to paste this in your project here that's all so you have to don't do anything uh, i will be sharing this project just copy pom.xml in your project remove the default one that's all don't uh, you don't need to just to understand what this configuration means suits mean a brief description is that these uh, this is how you can download the jar files and this is how you can recognize this test ng dot xml in this text ng xml when we will be having multiple tests this test ng xml will help us to identify which test to run we have must be having thousand of tests so whatever test will be writing here those would be executed so that's the concept so this is how you need to download your jar files you have to prepare a pom and test ng dot xml file and that's all now you start with working with the coding part all your dependencies all your jar files for your for your rest apis has been done okay thank you hello friends so in the previous session we talked about maven uh, creating a maven project okay so if you expand this project the structure would be like this this is the main test is generally a folder where all our tests are kept this is main this is uh, mainly used for the development purposes jre system library these are the java libraries are stored maven dependencies include the jars which we will be downloading okay so and this is your pom.xml which we talked about in this we will be kept keeping the information for all the jar files which will be needing in our project okay so let's delete this we don't need j unit okay now just a second yeah okay. now for the first jar we which we need is of test ng okay you must be aware of test ng if you are not then uh, let me give you a brief introduction uh, test you should know actually if you are going to project what actually the test ng is if you don't know you can go through the selenium course uh, uh, you will find mine selenium course and you can learn the test ng and uh, all the testing framework in detail so test ng suppose uh, you are maintaining five tests it is very easier to maintain but if you want to keep thousand test cases then it will be very difficult to maintain the test case because if your manager says you at random that okay webhub execute the test cases which are of uh, finance because there is a finance of api of, uh, changes so i will be at how to find out of those thousand test cases which are of finance okay so to help with our test automation to maintain our test we use test ng okay so first of all we need to download its jar file so the best way to download a jar file is just type maven and the jar you want to download test ng okay and click on enter you will find this maven repository i talked about there is a repository there is a server in which all the jars are kept so it is this click on this link and you will find all the versions this is the maven repository and you can find all the versions we want to work with this latest version so click on this you can download the direct jar file over here or you can download its dependency okay so let's download its dependency copy this and paste here under our dependencies section okay the next jar now for working with the api automation there are a lot of jars available actually what i mean a lot of jars available is that uh, when we want to send a json request over the internet 
for sending that json there are a lot of uh, methods available you can send it by using jsu library by jw library you can use http methods so there are a lot of libraries available but the best library which is available is the rest assured library which is given by jw so it is the library which is developed specially for testing of rest apis so definitely it is the best okay so and during the course when i will be teaching you will identify yourself yes it is the best because it follows the cucumber uh, as we know that cucumber is the uh, you can say is the most uh, talked uh, courses these days okay so what cucumber is cucumber is uh, in top of tdd tdd is test driven development so bdd comes over tdd that okay testing will be done not as per the functionality or the code but as per the use cases okay so writing of test cases with bdd is a real advantage okay so this uh, rest assured in this you will be coding as bdd only okay wait for some time from the next session we will be actually coding and you will finding very good that we are coding in english language okay like we write the sentences similarly we will be writing the code here okay so we download rest assured okay so we write rest assured library and click on search so this is a testing framework we will be downloading the latest version copy its dependency okay and we'll paste it here correct the indentation using control i okay so with the rest assured we need two more libraries that is json path and json scheme validator they are needed to manipulating with the json path etc okay so the first is the json path this is or the uh, uh, this is all the jar which is given by the jw okay jw has given the rest assured and similarly the json path mm, json library jw json path okay we will write version 2.2 uh, i think let me write here maven json its path okay this is the library json path this is the one yeah, it's 2.20 yeah this is the only it okay copy its dependency copy it and give it in your project control i to correct the annotation and the next library which will be having is maven uh json scheme validator okay yes yeah, so this is the one mm -hmm. yes json scheme validator and it should be also by jw this is the one which is given by jw yes this is the one okay so copy the dependency why did not pick because that was not given by jw we need the libraries which are given by jw copy this and keep under your projects correct the annotation so as soon as i click on save you will see this option coming at bottom saying the progress what this progress means that at least when you're using your first time make sure you are connected to internet okay what this is doing it is downloading all these jar files in your local system you have just given the name okay as you click on save maven will read these jars available uh, or not on your local system if it not then it will contact the maven repository and it will download all them so that's the reason it is downloading all of them okay it will be taking some time depending upon your internet speed now why uh, where they are actually kept on your local system 
so let me show you the path go to this pc c under users uh, to web hub and there is a folder created dot m2 so you can find all those libraries here okay they are being done like uh, under org you will find test ng okay we downloaded test ng this is 6.9 version okay and what the version we used 6.2.9 sorry no 6.9 <laughs> yeah 6.9 version and similarly a 6.9 version is downloaded here so this is the location where all the jar files are downloaded so it so you see here it's giving bash dot to this these all rest assured it is currently downloading the rest assured jar files okay so let it download So here comes the advantage of Maven and using pom.xml. I'm not uh, concerned at uh, where, uh, how to download these jar files. If in next case a new uh, jar file of 6.9 comes 6.10 here, I just download the 10 and click on save. So it will be automatically downloaded on my system. Okay. So let it download. Okay. Now. Uh, we need to work with test ng as well. We download the test ng file. So, what working of test ng, we need a test ng XML file. Okay. So, I have here, I will paste it here. Okay. So, first the downloading has to complete, then the another operation can be performed. So, let us, let me pause the video till it is completed. Okay okay so all jars has been downloaded okay so uh, what I was saying that this is the maven and we downloaded our test ng jar file to work with test ng we have this test ng xml here okay so I will come to it okay so in order to pom to select this test ng xml you have to write some plugin okay I have already with me so you have to copy this build okay and you have to paste this in your project here that's all so you have to don't do anything I, I will be sharing this project just copy here uh, this pom.xml in your project remove the default one that's all don't uh, you don't need to just to understand what this configuration means suits mean a brief in the description is that these this is how you can download the jar files and this is how you can recognize this test ng dot xml okay in this text ng xml when we will be having multiple tests this test ng xml will help us to identify which test to run we have must be having thousand of tests so whatever test will be writing here those would be executed okay so that's the concept so this is how you need to download your jar files you have to prepare a pom and test ng.xml file and that's all now you start with working with the coding part all your dependencies all your jar files for your automation for your rest apis has been done okay thank you
Hello, yes, friends. So in the previous session, uh, we have studied how to configure a Maven project. We have the data which uh, APIs we want to automate. Okay, and so we are ready. So let's start for the making of first test. Okay, this is a default test by Maven. Delete it. Okay, and let make a new class and name it as we are using weather api weather and i will be showing get request okay so let's make it add get requests okay and yes so when we are using test ng to know to tell the test ng that we are writing a test we have to write this test annotation okay so then the function name public void let it name it at test 0 1 okay above this write the comment simple what we'll be doing in this test that is simple get request okay and i will import this test ng annotation uh, yes Uh, let me import the test ng library and also test ng is added here if not okay and let me also add the annotation okay for getting weather request uh, by what is the first state by city name okay by city name save this so for using of uh, rest assured api we need to download we need to import a library okay so let's study we have to write a get request get Okay, so, uh, or let me first tell you which libraries are import. Okay, the library is first com dot. Okay, JV. I have already told we are using JV. Okay, and under the JV, we will be using rest assured. Rest assured. And this rest assured. And we will be calling it static import, okay, so that we don't need to create an object for it. And we will be downloading all its classes, okay. So, this get uh, etc., all these functions are present in this rest assured. So, if I click on this, you will find here this given get etc., okay. So what I need to do, I want to send a, suppose this is the API, when you click on this, authorization required, okay, it's just good, okay, Th I tell you why it's saying authorization required, let me click it again, in a new window, it's saying new authorization, now let's study this URL. So till here, it is the URL of the website, the API we want to hit. Then we have the parameter. The first parameter is the city. Uh, this. The first parameter is the city. I will remove this. We are not doing the country right now. The city and the another is the authorization key. The key which we get by registering upon this open weather map okay so that's why it is giving me an unauthorization error if i copy this key and i paste it here okay my key and if i enter so it works fine we get a json request here okay so how do first of all let's forget this now, first of all, let's understand how you can send this GET query with the help of Java code and using REST Assured API. 
so first of all there is a command get get you need to enter the uri in the uri we will enter this okay in a single line we won't need the uk okay and this and save this so in this what we are doing we are saying get i already told you that in the api rest api rest, we have four functions get post put and delete so here what we are doing we are giving some data city name and id and we are telling it give the weather report okay so let's execute it run this as a test ng test okay so it is executed successfully it is passed okay now whenever a api is passed or fail okay there is a status code returned okay when this api hit the server there is a response code which tells this api was successful or not suppose if this was a successful the code return was 200 if i make a different authorization key let's this one and if i enter so what is the code return is 401 unauthorized report so there are other status code which tell the api was successfully sent or not to get the all of the list what are these uh, status code so just type json uh, status codes okay so it is specification yeah they are present but i am looking for a list status codes proper status codes just a second <clears throat> there was a wikipedia link uh, yes these are the codes like 200 is for okay 201 is for accepted okay so we were getting 201 here okay it is for unauthorized so similarly various response codes will be returned it is the wikipedia http status code return for each and every api which is sent to the server okay so yes we have sent this api using the get but we want to check was this api a successful or not so we want to fetch its response code now how we can fetch that response code we will make an object of response response what this response do uh, jb this response will store all the information which is received by this get command what is all the information which is received Uh, let me give a proper id here and enter this is all the information which i receive from the get command so using this response i will be extracting all the information which this get command get receives so i am be using when this is a simple english language with rest assured apis first of all when what i want to do when i want to send this get request okay so it will return me the response so the this annotations these rest assured annotations are very good they work in when then get etc so they work in when then then etc in the later sections you will be uh, getting very used to that how it is work and you will finding pretty easy that what the this when get is getting okay so now from this response we want to check if the status code was returned right or wrong so you can write response dot get response 
sorry get status code okay get status code so what this will do it will from this response it will find the status code and let's print it let's print this status code what it's giving save this and execute now so it is giving me 200 that's perfectly right now let me suppose modify this let me remove e okay and save this and run this this and now run this yes see the response code here is 401 so when you're making a smoke suit for your api test you can work in the similar manner so this test code this test would return status code 200 now let it make it e back again to e okay you can make a different test case here and you will be giving at status code 401 you enter an invalid key okay change the test case name okay and here i mention here assert i will be using test ng assert condition assert assert dot assert true or oh, leave it uh, i will be telling you okay assert uh, equals give me Okay, I will be comparing if the status code return is 200 or not. Okay. So, what is the actual status code which I have returned? It's response dot status code. And what I am expecting? I am expecting is response code 200. Right. So, I will write 200 here and save this similarly if i write here in this case the status code return should be 401 else the test would fail now run this test ng test so there were two tests and both the test case passed because in first case it was 200 and the second case as the key was wrong it should return 401 so let's say if you uh, if the status code return was different if you uh, in your first test case also if this e was missing then let's see what will happen if i run this as a test ng test and if you check here if your first test case is failed the reason was failure is because in your first test case you were expecting 200 status code but it returned 401 because your key was wrong okay so this is how you can develop your test cases you know the status code that in case of successful status code will return 200 so give correct url and it should return 200 if it does not return 200 your api test would return a false okay and it will be shown in red color okay so that was a simple test a get request okay so let's continue with more guest request and using this rest assured library to full okay thank you what we were doing here was this was the url and we were sending into one url that uh, parameters etc but this is not the correct way when you work with rest issue so let's see how we can do this copy this okay let's 
we will comment both these tests because we don't want them to be executed so i comment the test ng annotation okay and what is this test for in this test i would be showing how to use parameters with rest assured okay and test name would be 3 so here we will be keeping only the uri part not the parameters part We want to send a GANT request. Before that, we want to specify it parameters. How, when we want to send a GET request, we want to set a GET request which is given. GET request which is given whose parameters are. So we will be using this param. Yeah. Okay. So. Here we will specify this get request that given these are the parameters when you want to send this get request. Okay, so what are the parameters? So the first parameter is Q. Q states the city. Suppose the city is London. The next parameter is what is the next parameter? The next parameter is the app id which we want to send for the authorization so the next parameter is app id and its value its value is this it's so easy with working with rest assured it's just it's a plain english given whose parameters are this the second parameter is this when i am sending this as a get request this sure is very easy when we want to automate with this library now let's run this so it should be successful let's see yes it is successful and we are getting a response as 200 Okay, you can um, work more with that also. Okay, so you can write if okay if uh, response dot get status code is equal to is equal to two hundred system dot out dot print ln API is working fine. Else, API is not working fine. So, here you can get the negative case if the API does not give 200 and you can work on it. Simple if and else statement. API is working fine because the response code was 200. Let me comment this. Let me write a for test here in which we will be using assert or we will be asserting our test case in rest assured API. Actually, I'm telling you all the modes which uh, people are working these or uh, working these rest assured APIs in automating their test cases. Here we are getting the response and we are checking its response code is 200 or not. Normally, when we are working with not much big APIs, people are checking in their statement only. I will tell you how. Let me copy this. Test case is 4. Okay, I will delete this everything. I will delete also because I won't be taking here response. I will be checking here only that if it's right or wrong. If this API is right or wrong. After the get. 
what I am saying here, given these are the parameters, when I send this request, what I want to do? I want to, sorry, then, what I want to do? Then, assert, then I want to check, what I want to check that status code, status code is 200. See how the English flows. When these are the given parameters, when I send this get request, then I want to assert or verify that the status code is 200. Okay, let's execute this. Come in the above test. Okay, it is commented and let me give it at the rate test annotation here as well. And execute. It's work fine. It has passed. Now let's say if I give assert 2000, 201 and I save this and I run this. It is failed. It is saying that the expected is 201 while the actual which we received was 200 so that's why it is failing so if you want to a smoke test what i mean by a smoke test is that uh, suppose the development is done the apis are developed and everything is working fine whenever a build is released for the testing for this let's say for the manual testing we want to make sure that all the apis are working fine Suppose I'm checking the app UI and I'm clicking on button and it is not being clicked or I'm not getting the data. I marked a defect with the development team. Development team then looks into it and verifies these are comments the backend API was not working. So a lot of time is wasted. The, the tester is checking and developer is then again checking. Why not execute these APIs, develop an automation script and execute these APIs for 1-2 minutes and verify with the status code 200 that all the APIs are working fine. While receiving a build for the testing, we can just run a smoke suit to verify the APIs are working or not. If the APIs are not working, then there is no use of the testing of that functionality. Suppose if login API is not giving a 200 response code, then why it's the use for the testing unnecessary? And this automation script which is developed with the API having 100 or 200 APIs, this in the suit you develop will take hardly 2 or 3 minutes. The API execution is very fast. That's the real power of uh, API testing comes. It comes first level is the smoke suit. Hello friends. So let's move on. Okay. So what we were doing here was we were splitting this URL. Okay, uh, actually the U. Yeah, this was the URL, and we were sending into one URL that uh, parameters etc. But this is not the correct way when you work with REST issue. Okay, because uh, maybe you have developed these test cases, but in the near future, you want that. I want to get the temperature or uh, for all the cities so let's say 10 cities then you have to write 10 scripts okay so that's not the good way to work with okay so let's see how we can do this so let's copy this okay We will comment both these tests because we don't want them to be executed. So I comment the test ng annotation. Okay. And what is this test for? In this test, I would be showing how to use parameters with rest assured. Okay, and test name would be three. Yeah, test name would be three. So here we will be keeping only the URI part, not the parameters part. Okay, now 
वॉट वी वॉन्ट टू सेंड वी वेंट वी वॉन्ट टू सेंड वी वॉन्ट टू सेंड अ गेंट रिक्वेस्ट बिफोर दैट वी वॉन्ट टू स्पेसिफाई इट पैरामीटर्स सो यू कैन फाइंड हेयर जस्ट अ सेकेंड नॉट गिवेन गिवेन इज फॉर गेट ओके जस्ट अ सेकेंड माई माउस या when we want to send a get request we want to set a guest get request which is given get request which is given whose parameters are so we will be using this param okay uh yeah okay so here we will specify this get request that given these are the parameters when you want to send this get request okay so what are the parameters so the first parameter is q q de defines the city suppose the city is london okay the next parameter is what is the next parameter the next parameter is the app id which we want to send for the authorization so the next parameter is app id and its value its value is this okay so you see here it's so easy with working with rest assured it's just it's a plain english given whose parameters are this the second parameter is this when i'm sending this as a get request okay so this uh, using i was uh, saying before this rest assured is very easy when we want to automate with this library okay now let's run this okay so it should be successful let's see yes it is successful and we are getting a response as 200 okay you can um, work more with that also okay so you can write if okay if uh, response dot get status code okay is equal to is equal to 200 then system dot out dot print ln api is working fine else API is not working fine. So here you can get the negative case if the API does not gives two hundred, and you can work on it. Okay, let me execute. Simple if and else statement. API is working fine because the response code was two hundred. Okay. So. let me comment this now let me write a for test here in which we'll be using assert okay or we will be asserting our test case in rest assured api actually i'm telling you all the modes which uh, people are working these or uh, working these rest assured apis in automating their test cases here we are getting the response and we are checking its response code is 200 or not normally when we are working with not much big apis people are checking in their statement only i will tell you how okay so let me copy this test case is 4 okay i will delete this everything 
so i will delete also because i won't be taking here response i will be checking here only that if it's right or wrong if this api is right or wrong after the get what i am saying here given these are the parameters when i send this request what i want to do i want to sorry then then i want to do okay what i want to do then assert then i want to check what i want to check that status code status code is 200 okay see how the english flows when these are the given parameters given these are the parameters when i send this get request then i want to assert or verify that the status code is 200 so simple <laughs> okay let execute this come in the above test okay it is commented and put me let me give the at the rate test annotation here as well and execute okay it's work fine it has passed now let's say if i give assert 2000 201 and i save this and i run this It is failed. It is saying that the expected is 201 while the actual which we received was 200. So that's why it is failing. So if you want to a smoke test, what I mean by a smoke test is that uh, suppose the development is done. Okay. The APIs are developed and everything is working fine. Whenever a build is released for the testing, for this, let's say for the manual testing. Um, we want to make sure that all the APIs are working fine. Okay. Suppose I'm checking the app UI and I'm clicking on button and it is not being clicked or I'm not getting the data. I marked a defect with the development team. Development team then looks into it and verifies these are commits the backend API was not working. Okay. So a lot of time is wasted. The, the tester is checking and developer is then again checking. Why not execute? these apis develop an automation script and execute these apis for one two minutes and verify with the status code 200 that all the apis are working fine okay so while receiving a build for the testing we can just run a smoke suit to verify the apis are working or not if the apis are not working then there is no use of the testing of that functionality. Suppose if login API is not giving a 200 response code, then why it's the use for the testing unnecessary? And this automation script, which is developed with the API, uh, if, if uh, I can say uh, you having 100 or 200 APIs, this, the suit you develop will take hardly two or three minutes. The API execution is very fast. Okay, so that's the real power of uh, API testing comes. It comes first level is the smoke suit. Okay. So let's try one more example. Now try one more example. Let me copy this. And here we will be getting the response. I want to check what all as everything is available in the response before we were only getting the status code now I want to collect all the response which is available so what I will be doing I will be writing system dot out dot print ln resp dot as string I will be getting the response as a string and save this and run run this test ng test this is all the response you have got it is a JSON file as I've already told before that rest API's can work with JSON X well as XML but the recommended is JSON Let us read this it is very hard to read this that coordinates it means that coordinates these are the latitude longitude 
it will be the same the response would be same as it is given here it is not so much readable so we have tools which can easily parse the json much available offline tools as well as online so check this online json reader open this first link okay and let us paste our text file here and click on viewer you will see a hierarchy of json file is given that under json there are coordinates weather main wind and clouds if you check here similar under the json there will be coordinates weather base main wind clouds rain snow so similarly we have here if you want to check the coordinates swipe and check if you want to check the weather expand it it is very easy sometimes we have hundred of data in that case these readers are very much helpful also when we want to find the json path uh, we will be uh, studying what the json path in the later sections we were checking the london so what we can say the london latitude longitude is this it's about the clouds yes it's all clouds wind is flowing at the speed of this all the weather temperature is this pressure is this humidity maximum temperature minimum temperature so all of that information is shown here in fahrenheit degree etc what it's giving value in you can study this and you get all that information this is the result the next so what are the next apis in this api what we were getting we want to get the current weather data so we checked it by city name now suppose we want to check by city id so it is almost similar instead of location we have to find the it you can find the list of ids here okay so let's work with this only at the retest public void zero five five is used so let it make it six inverted commas are missing we would get a response when the parameters are sorry not when uh, first it would be given that what is given the parameters are given what are the parameters first of all id let's put this id this is the id now the next parameter the next parameter is the auth id okay uh, that is this id app id what is my app id is this one see when get what is the I want i want to get this url open this uh, till weather okay so i want to get the response and then i want to check assert assert equals response dot get status code what should be the status code status code should be 200 and also let's print the response response dot as string it will print the whole response so now run this okay so test case is passed okay and also it has returned the response code if you go to your json reader go to text and copy this paste this sorry and check in the viewer you will see that you will get a similar type of report okay because these are the methods available 
these are the various APIs to get the current weather by city name or by city ID. For a practice, take another API showing you how to work with different parameters. Here we have a zip code. Zip. Okay, and the zip code and the country. Let me give the zip code of Delhi comma followed by the country code the country code is in and else would remain the same now run this see you get the details latitude longitude every details you need to know countries in sunrise timing sunset timing clouds degrees etc this is how you can work with get request you can also work with uh, different apis you can get the current weather report you can get the 5r report 6r report so you can access all these apis and a great documentation this is the api documentation which is available we have studied by city name by city id by zip code you can work with other stuff parameters of api respond is json and xml Okay, it get the JSON as well as XML. Was the JSON part we were checking? It also reports the XML. This is the XML. Try these get statements and make sure you are not bombarding them. That's all from the next session. We will study about put request.
So we have seen various examples regarding the request API request. Now let's consider an example. So what we will be doing here is what this API does. You give the city ID and it gives you a weather report. Okay. Now in the weather report, if you see the response, it also gives the latitude and longitude in the response. Now, there is an another API. Mm, just a second. Just a circle. Yeah, by geographic coordinates. In this, you give the latitude and longitude and it gives you a weather report. Okay. Now, both of the weather report okay that is the first api using the id and by geofic coordinates would be the same because we will be entering the geofic coordinates of that city id only so we will be comparing that the apis are giving the correct result okay so let's start Let's make a test case here. Give it a test. Public void test and it is 10. Okay. So, what I will be doing? I will be using the API for getting the weather report through ID. Okay. So I'll be using response rest uh, given okay and parameter okay the parameter by city ID okay the parameter that is ID is this. My Eclipse just hang, uh, just wait, for, yeah, it's now up. So, be using param and first is the ID, whose ID is this. Okay, the second parameter. It is this authentication key that is app ID. Okay. Okay. Uh, when I will be sending a get request. And this is my get request. So I'm getting the response here. Now from this response, first I need to get the weather report for the city. Okay, so I will be using string report ID. Okay, that is the report, the weather report which is given by ID. Okay, and I will be using resp dot then okay and whose content type is JSON. Okay, because we know the response we have achieved is is in JSON and we will be using JSON part to extract our data as we have been studying in previous examples. So I will be using content content type okay. 
JSON. Okay, and what I need to do, I need to extract, extend with path. And what is the path? The same, we the response is the same. Okay, so we will get the weather report here. And this is the path. What I'm getting here is weather zero notation description. The authentication needs to be correct. Yeah, that is the weather zero and description. So that is few clouds weather at zero with index and the few clouds this would be printed so let's see uh, print out this system dot out dot println and what is it it is the weather description by id weather description by id and give me here report id save this and first run this let me comment the above test cases save this my clips is running very slow today sorry for that Okay, let me run this. Run this as test and test. and uh, it has thrown me an error and the error is connect uh, let me run again Connection refused. Why this error coming? Uh, okay, I have written here param instead of parameter. Okay, so that why it was giving an error. So this is first parameter and this is the second one. Now let's execute. And this is my tenth test case. Okay, it's still failing. Ah, HTTP missing. Okay, you sometimes we make so silly mistakes which are very hard to identify. Okay, now run this test ng test. okay so it has executed and the weather report is few clouds okay now what we need to do 
from this we need to fetch this longitude and latitude what is the path for it it's coordinate latitude and the coordinate longitude so let's work on this so first of all get the string longitude so it would be our response okay then and then the content type okay the content type is json okay and i want to extract uh code and then long that's my path dot long so this will give my longitude now one more thing this longitude the value which is returned is in float integer it's an integer value that is a float value so we need to convert it into the string so we have to type cast it we will be using string dot value of it will convert it into a string value of float okay so we have type cast it so let's print the longitude that is longitude is and similarly we find the latitude as well so we will be using latitude and here instead of longitude we'll be using lat and latitude lat okay now we have the latitudes and longitudes so we will be finding the weather report according to it and now then fetching the weather report we will be comparing it with the weather report fetched from the specific id okay so in the weather we have to give latitude and longitude first the latitude and then the longitude so let's make use of the code written we will just manipulate it okay so here we will be using latitude latitude here is response by coordinates longitude that is long okay and this is my authentication key when i will be sending this get command let extract the value here only then okay i have to check whether the content type is json or not okay and then i need to extract see so easy then when etc what i need to extract i need to extract from this weather description okay so i will be using weather okay which is at zero index dot description so if you find any difficulty just copy this copy this and put it in the parser json parser and just find it as i have taught in before sections it would be very easy okay so we have extracted the weather so here it will be string that is response by report let be report before it was report by id now it's report by coordinate 
so we have two weather reports of the same location by the id and by the coordinates okay that is report by coordinates report by coordinates okay and let us put an assert value to check if both are same or not assert equals one is the report by id and the another one is report by coordinates and let us check if they this asserts passes or fails run this as the test ng test okay so we have seen that the weather report through id was few clouds we found it its latitude and longitude and then we run the weather report through coordinates and the weather here is as well as few coordinates so by this we have verified that both the apis are returning the correct result so these type of scenarios you have to make when you are doing the api testing okay so that was the so in this uh, examples we have studied till now we have mostly studied the get request okay now there are another rest apis as well we have studied like put patch we have delete apis etc so we will be studying them as well now uh, one more thing as i have also told you before that while developing these videos my main objective is you to work with live apis okay i don't want to make locally so you, you we can learn by it but it's good to work live because that way you get a really good representation so don't bombard these apis okay uh, it's according to their terms and conditions okay so be pretty light and try to learn as much as you can so from the next sessions uh, we will be using some json server to study the put delete etc requests okay so thank you now friends so mostly in the previous sessions we were studying about the rest apis and uh, we were mainly studying the get request now there are other requests like uh, Port, delete, patch, etc. So now we want to first get those web services. Okay. Now uh, for testing and learning of the web services, REST APIs, it is necessary first to have a REST APIs. So let me show you a method by which you can have the REST services, whatever REST services you want. Okay. So let me show you how you can configure your rest apis yourself and you can learn api testing as much as you can just a second let my browser to open so there is one thing if you type like git uh, json server okay this is the first link click it let it to be open it's taking so time let me if, yeah it's open so if you read the title get the full fake rest api with zero coding in less than 30 seconds and they are talking seriously yes so uh, if i want if i say that you want to develop your rest apis locally then how you can do is that first I will give you a code then you have to start your Apache web server then you have to install the database in your system and the another steps for the configuration but with this JSON server you can start making REST APIs within seconds okay so in this 
uh, first you uh, repeat request is that you need to install the node.js okay so how you can download the node.js just go to google and type download node.js this is the link okay click on the first search menu and de depending upon your bit download the respective bit version dot msi okay so i have already downloaded it with me and this is the one just click on it so node.js will start downloading on your system so the setup menu has opened and it's checking the space requirements and other stuff it may take time depending upon your system speed Come on, man. I'm waiting for this next to be clickable. Yeah. So, click on next. So, I have already installed. So, it is giving me the push, the option to repair. In this, in your case, it will be giving you install something like that. So, I'm just clicking on repair. It's performing the activities in your case it will be downloading the node.js on your system Okay. I'm just pausing the video till the time it's get repaired. Okay. After clicking on next next, the Node.js is installed on my system. If you go to your C drive, under the C drive in program files you will find a node.js folder installed so copy this path and we need to set the environmental variables so go to my pc properties to the advanced system settings and the environmental variables find the path and at the end you type the path okay this is the path which i have added okay and click on okay now, if you open your command prompt, okay, and if you type uh, npm, pm, then it should not give you a uh, error, else it will give you some logical data, okay, like this that where what the write the full command something now the first thing is need we need to do we need to download this json server so for that we need to install this json server for this copy this command and paste it here and the json server will start downloading on your system okay so it is being downloaded as you can see
okay it is being downloaded it will take some time let me pause okay though the json server has start now what we need to do we need to copy this text and on desktop we need to create a db.json file so copy this and create one file db.json okay let me tell you how to create first of all uh, go to desktop and create a new file okay paste the data which we have copied and save it on desktop go to desktop and here you need to write db.json in inverted commas you need to write db.json and from here you need to select all files and click on save so on the desktop you will see this db.json file created okay so now we are all set our json server started and what actually this file was this file is actually the database okay that is saying a db.json so if we go to this local server okay you will find that your json server has been installed properly go to this url i think can't be reached ah uh, we forgot one step after that we need to uh, start this db as well so you have to go to a location where their db is located so it is in the desktop so i will go to cd desktop okay on my desktop this db.json file is there so copy this and shoot this command so this will in the first command we install the json server and in this command we are starting the db click on okay and so it is saying that it has started the services now if you go to localhost 3000 yes it's saying successfully congrats you have successfully running the json server okay so this is how you can work with it so we have configured our server in a very easy way we have not started any apache server we don't have databases etc so it has started a dummy restful apis now with these servers being set we can now work with post patch delete commands etc okay because in order to work with it we need to create these apis and normally if we go through the websites uh, we can get we have, as in the weather example we get the free get apis but there were no post apis because these post would delete apis these apis are used to update the information get request is to fetch the information while the other requests are manipulating some type some or other type of database okay they are manipulating some database so that's why though the apis of facebook etc give these editing updations but they are will be quite complicated if you start working on these okay so that's the reason we have set up this json server so we can work the, with these all requests here we have mentioned that you can use any http verbs get post post patch and delete okay so from the next sessions we will be learning all these commands okay so that's all that was a session related to installation and configuration of json server and from next sessions we will be looking the other commands as well thank you okay friends so now our rest api has been set up so let's start if i go to the this link uh, close this one close this one okay so it will show you the request which are supported the first one is let's say the guest okay if i write localhost this and after that if i write slash posts slash posts and click on enter then it will me show me the get request all the posts which are available if i go to this database and open in notepad consider these three are different tables one table second table and third table okay so in this post table you can see that only one 
okay one uh, uh, data is there for this id okay so we have used a get request to show all the post replace and so it has given this okay now let us work with the help of java code let us make a new uh, java file which will be the json server api testing let's name like this json server requests okay so let's take this get request also and though i know you uh, we have already studied a lot of get request but it's good the more we practice the more we learn okay so this is the get request public void test 01 okay so what i am doing in this i am giving given okay now what is given yeah what is given that when let me import the uh, jar files as well so the static imports there are some static imports which needs to be imported okay okay when when i want to send a get request get uri now what is the get request get request is this one that is the post so it will give me a response so let me take into a response a esp okay and let us print the response which it has received so system dot out dot println and the get response is and resp save this and let's execute test ng test okay so oops i made a mistake <laughs> resp dot i want to get it as a string okay yeah now let's execute if i see yes so it has given me the output now let's see if there are two uh, responses here in the database or leave that but okay we'll cutting in later on now now let us understand what is a post request in the get request we are normally sending the url all the url associate with some data parameters in case of post request we send a body to the url okay so just to repeat that in a guest request we generally send send the url which give, retrieve some information from the database or we also give some parameters like from this url get all the ids etc and we get the information in case of post request suppose we want to update some information so there is a body associated in which the data is there we send it to a url and that data is updated to the database okay so let's study a post request now what post request is supported by this server is this one okay there is one get request also let us study later on okay first study this post request if i copy this uh okay and i write a new test here at the rate test public void test 02 
okay let me increase the font size as well it is going small text font edit 16 is good It is <laughs> I just one very big I think uh, 14 would work okay so so in this in this post request what we need to do let me tell you how we send a post request post request is first of all sent similar to get request in which we have to say given okay given whose body in this case we send some body here okay and the body let's say a string in the form of string i will tell you what the data we have to enter here later on okay then the body when Not accepting. Uh, let me write here string value first. Okay. Now, when and in this case, what I am sending because when we are sending a post request, it is mandatory to tell what in what format we are sending a post request. That is, what is the content type of sending the request? The content type. If you normally don't write this, it will return an error okay that is json let me show you here as well they have clearly written yes you see here a post put or a patch request should include a content type json application json header to use the json in the request body okay if we won't write this we will get an error okay i will t show you the error if we don't use this for now let's use this and instead of we will using get but now we are sending a post request so we will be using post here okay and what is the uri for the post the uri is this uh yeah, this one that is slash post slash post and this HTTP okay now instead of get we have used post now we have to give some body that is we have to enter some data which will be update on the database on the back end now the data should be in form of this okay because we need to update this data so we have to use this type of data okay so how we can write first we have to enter the id okay so let's start writing this so first is the braces the braces then the id so we have to write inside id is equal to sorry uh, a colon okay and what is the id suppose now we want to the second id okay this is our first data Yeah, before inverted commas we need to use the slashes also because what this the string means this commas means that it is a string but when we are using this comma here it is saying the end of the string so it is giving an error here so for it to be read it as an inverted comma we you need to add the forward slashes that is the escape characters now it will be read as string similarly we will add the another parameters as well title now, after the comma we will add the title inverted comma title 
and followed by slashes colon and what the title you want to give suppose the title i want to give is dummy title <coughs> and the forward slashes now the third parameter author inverted commas author and the author name let's say is web of that's my name and the forward slashes okay and let's put in separate lines so it is more readable and this one. yeah okay so similar to this we want to add one more data so we have add this data into the body and we are saying that this data needs to be sent in a form of json okay to this in a post request so let's see comment up above one and run this now run this as test ng test so what the response it is passed so what here the past means that data is updated okay so let's uh, take this into under response and let me print out the response as well response dot a string save this and run it unexpected end of the token uh what the wrong i'm doing here the body is this okay that's right when content type is json i want to send to a post uh looks pretty good to me okay i have not close this okay so that's the reason yeah now run this so it has printed me the output and it's saying pass so what it means that this data was sent okay in a form of post request in the json type format and it is updated in the server now how we can verify it open this database okay yes you see now a uh, second data has been uploaded in this database id is 2 okay one was default present with the title of dummy title and author is webhub okay so this is how the post request is sent if i comment this and i run the get request again let me run this you see now i am getting two responses here okay before i was getting one so this is this post request has been successfully updated on the database okay so i have added a new id and it is proved with the help of get request so we have sent this uh, get request mm, there is one more get request which we studied here uh, let's take it in the next session because okay so and i will be telling you that this is not the way we normally send the post requests so why i will let you know okay thank you for the session hello friends so in the previous session we studied about how to send a post request okay so here in the body we send the data of the post in the form of a string okay so you can do this way also but it is not recommended when we are sending a post request there are multiple reasons one reason is that uh, suppose uh, you have to send different post request with multiple datas okay different datas so you have to always update this string file okay and we know in the automation this is not a good choice okay 
Here we are working with three parameters only, but in real scenario, there can be 10 or 20 parameters. Okay, so writing a so much a big string, creating and handling of that string is very tedious. So we don't work with this way. We work using the objects. Okay, what objects? What I'm saying, like here, if you see body, you can see we can give the body by it by array by file argument input stream objects string we use so now we will be sending the body in a form of an object okay now how we will send this let's study okay now mm, this is a post request which will be studying okay let's copy this and open our json viewer Let's paste it here and we will be creating a jar file or a class file for it. Okay. So let's make a new folder, uh, a new package that is API testing dot com dot org dot classes. So in this we will be keeping the classes. So this is our first class and let's say we will name it uh, as this is a post request so we will name it as a new class and we will name it as a post okay now what this class is capable of handling it is capable of handling an id title and an author okay so we will be creating this class file that is private string id okay private string uh, title and private string author okay these are all three variables we have created now we will be creating the functions to manipulate this id that is we will be creating its getter and setter methods so let's first work with the id we will be giving public public string okay and we will be making get id So after the get statement, uh, this get statement will be returning this ID that is return. What you need to return? We need to return this ID. Okay. Now this was the get method. Now we want if we want to set this ID. What at public? the return type would be void okay and set id and then we need to pass the string value which we need to set that is string id okay and where we want to set we want to set to this id this id value so the current uh, uh, variable is represented by this dot id it represents this id okay and id so this is the get and set method for this id similarly we have to prepare get and set method for a title as well as for author okay so let's write public string uh, get title return title similarly the set request public void set title string title uh, 
and this dot title is equals to title okay and then we get an set method for the author public string get author and uh, it will return author okay and corresponding set method public void set author and this dot author is equals to author okay so we are done set author okay i need to pass the string as well string author okay so we have prepared a class object for the post <laughs> sorry guys yeah so i have prepared the class object for the body part here so before in which we send the body in a form of title now i have prepared a class object for it okay so i can make an object of this class and can i can send a post request okay let's see how we can do that now okay and and the test public void test zero three okay so first of all we need to create an object of this class that is post i will name it as posts don't be confused post request is different and this post class is different okay it's just a coincidence that this name is same okay so don't be confused that it's a post request object or something then new post okay now in this post we need to set all these three ids okay so before we were having these ids okay uh, let me refresh it yeah this was the database so this was the two ids which were having now we will add a third id to it so we have make an object then we can use post dot corresponding set method in order to set all these three variables so first of all we need to set the id id we want to set is 3 okay next we want to set the title okay so i will saying object uh, posts request by object okay and then the author set author and let the author be myself only that is webhub okay so we have make a java object this is the java object which is having all three these values so now let's send a post request in a similar way that is given okay when as we have studied that for sending the post request we have to specify the content type and in our case the content type is json content type is json okay and then we need to specify the body part now in the previous case we send this thing now in case we have an object okay we have prepared an object so we will be seeing this object and the object name and the 
post request. Now what's the post request? This is my post request. Yes, posts. Let's write. Okay, so this will give me a response object. Response RESP. And let me print this response as well. response through post object In normal cases we just check it is returning true uh, sorry we normally check whether it is returning the status code as 200 or not okay so response okay so this is it now we are sending the object now it has various benefits here first of all the code looks very neat and clean okay so any point of time you want to change a value you can set the value now after this let's say you can again want to send a post request you with a different id so you can just set the id again okay and you can send another post request while in case of string the maintenance of the string is very large okay so let's execute it and see if it's running fine or not run as sorry this is the one json server request okay it's asking me to save Title one two rs dot me anyway the command was successful and let's see the database it is asking me for to reload yes one two and three the id is three title post request for object author web of. so we have successfully updated the post request in our database so this is how you can handle with objects okay so that's all uh, so i will recommend you to try some more these post requests okay uh, listening to these videos won't help you to actually learn the api automation so after watching suppose i if i write one test view and after you view it do practice it yourself okay if you find any issues then again watch the video and then practice again yourself if if still you are not able to do it then do ask me or in the discussion forum type your query okay but please practice them without practice them you won't be able to perform because when you are working in real projects you will be getting the api which are more complex can, than this okay So that's all. Thank you. Okay. So there are two uh, requests we will be studying now. One is the get request to get the specific post with respect to it ID, and yeah, this is the one. Okay. So actually, we missed this in the get. Uh, when we're studying the get request for this uh, json server so let's cover it now i will be writing test let's comment the above test okay public void test equals zero three let's go at zero four and uh, what I will write, I will write given okay, when 
get okay we need to suppose get the data value uh, the value for the third post that is the id is 3 okay so let me use post and it will be id 3 so this is my my request so okay and uh, let me take this under response and response dot as type okay and what this request was this one so let me paste it here so that you can easily identify it later when you get this code okay and let's execute so all the uh, information related to third id will be displayed one two three I'm missing something i think posts and three okay post 3 let me check if another test is not running it should be give for the third only it let me check why it's wrong something here wrong oh it's test case 1 is also being executed test case 1 now let's execute yes so it is displaying me only the details value of third that is the whose id is third okay now let's study about the put request now what actually the put request is whenever you want to make some changes okay so in the post request what we have done in the post request what we have done we have created a new entry in the database okay suppose we want to update that entry then we can use a put request okay what i mean by this is let me comment this if i run this again okay if i run this again it's a post request it will create a new entry in a database but now what my motive here is i want to update the already existing these are the fields which are already existing for id1 id2 id3 suppose i want to update them in that case i can use the put request okay so now let's make a simple put request so put request can also be made through uh, put request is similar to post only but just it will update it uh, so in the body we can send the string as well as java object as we have studied in the post request but forget the string part we always send body part in a form of an object so just don't let anything come in your mind that you will be sending as a string whether the api is easy or hard always send it through an object okay so let me take this put request okay so we'll be writing at the rate test annotation and uh, public void and test 0 5 okay so we'll be making an object for the post Okay, so we'll be writing post, post is equals to new post, okay, and the entering data to it, setting data that is set, uh, first of all, oh sorry, post, set author, uh, okay, so the author name, let me first write the ID, so it goes in, in synchronization, okay, ID, 
So let me update this third ID. Okay. So ID I want to update is third. And or you can change the ID also, but uh, it's not recommended to update the ID. Okay, ID should be primary key. Okay, so we will be telling which ID to update in the URL, but I'm just keeping the ID the same as it is. Okay, and set author. So in the author, it's webhub. I will be writing update, updated author name instead of this. Also, in the title, post dot set title, we will be writing updated title name. Okay. Now we will be sending this in a put request post is a class name don't confuse with the post request okay so we'll be sending a put request now so we'll be using given okay when content type we have to send the content type in json you remember here it is written that a post put or patch request should be included in content type json Okay, so I'll be using content type, content type dot JSON. Okay, and the body which I will be sending is in post object. Okay, and who's, you know, I'll be sending instead of put, I will be sending a put request. Instead of post, a put request. And... It is sent something like this. First, the basic URL. Then, after the basic URL, I have to write post. Then, slash the ID which I want to update. Okay. Post and the ID. I want to update the third ID. Okay. And let me get the response of it as well. response and print out the same put api response response dot as response response dot as string okay and save the changes now let's run this run this as a test ng test so it has updated it the id3 let's check in the database as well yes you see the id3 is updated here the title is coming at updated title name and author is coming and updated author name okay so if it have been a send in a post request then a new id title and author is created so this is also put request is also known as the update request if you go to an sql statements put works similarly to the update request okay so that was about the put request okay so in the next session we will be studying about what the patch request is okay thank you hello friends so in this session we'll be learning about a post request now what it is a post request oh sorry i made a mistake i will be learning about a patch request now what is the difference between post put and patch request in the post request we are adding a new entry in a database okay that is we are creating a new row in a put request we are updating the changes as we have seen that suppose i want to change my username or i want to change my title i can send a put request and update it but there is one problem with the put request that when i want to send a put request i have to send all these three parameters 
okay that is id this and this let me just show you uh, this was our was our post request right sorry it is put here yeah. it was a put request now if in this i won't send this send author and send writer then what will happen it will update it to the null value okay so in a put request it is mandatory to send all these values again in the updated value so it is a f quite tiresome uh, not good recommended because whenever i want to update i am sending all that information again so to help with this process there comes the patch request now what the patch request says patch request says only send me the data which you need to update that's all it won't be changing or affecting the other data in that request or in that body okay if i want to let's say update the author name then i only need to send the updated author name i don't have to worry about title name and the id they will remain same as it is so that comes the real benefit of patch request if in a update command there are 10 of fields okay if you uh, sending a put request you have and you are changing only one entry in that case you have to send all those entries but in case of patch you have to only send a field which needs to be updated so it takes saves a lot of your efforts so let's study about the patch request so the patch request available with is this the post and the id you want to update okay so for updating the patch request we won't be following the java object we will be sending it through the string because we are updating only one field okay when we are updating only one value then why the use to create a object for it okay if you have many objects then please go ahead and create an object file but we are creating updating only one value so i will be sending the body in a string okay suppose i want to update this third id only and i want to update this title name again okay so let me use test public void 06 okay i will be using given yeah body given in string type now what i am updating i am updating this title okay so we have already seen that how we send a string in commas okay then i need to use title semicolon updated by put request and in inverted commas i have to use forward slash okay then i want to send this body in when the content type is json because i want to send them in a json type format content type is json and uh, what i need to send i want to send a patch request patch url okay and first of all the base url okay then post and the third id which i need to update that is post the id value okay and let me take the response and check if it's being updated or not response response patch patch request response dot as string okay and save the changes 
So this is the patch request which we have made. Let me uncomment the above request as well and save the changes and let's execute. Run this as test ng test. Okay, I think it was successful. Title updated by put request. It is oh I made a mistake here. I made a mistake, I made a mistake. Okay, just a second. Let me update the database as well. Okay. The title, the spelling of title was wrong, so it created a new row in the database. When you're working with actual APIs, this it will give you an error. In our case, it didn't give an error because uh, we are using a, a free and very basic APIs authentications are here. Okay, so that's the reason. So let's now execute. So it got failed. Let us check the reason. Connection refused. Uh, let us check. Given body title is equals to updated. Okay. And when the content type is JSON, patch request. it is fine and it should work let me try again no it's not Let me check if the server is running or not. So it might be the case it's giving you an error. Okay, so it stopped. The reason was that. Okay, let me start it again. Actually, the server was stopped, so that's the reason. Let me check it now. Okay. Okay, there is some errors. That's the reason. Okay. This was the comma. So it should work now. Okay. Let me let me run this as test ng test. Okay, I have to start the. Let me copy this as well because when I'm be updating with a new database. Okay, because I was I have made a new entry and I deleted it but forgot to uh, remove the comma, so that's why it was giving an error. Okay, now it is started and it should work now. Yeah three title yes it is updated let me see the refresh database you can see only the title is updated that is updated by post request if what I would have sent a put request by this then it should get all the author and ID is null but when I send it as a patch request it has updated this value and it has not updated the other values so well, these days patch request is highly recommended many people are using the patch request because they are easiness to update okay so this is all or about the post put and patch request in the next session we will be studying about how we send a delete request okay thank you okay so in this session we will be studying about the delete request what the delete API does it removes the record from the database now in our case the delete request is very straightforward it says that post and the ID which you want to delete so it is very simple 
just still execute and check which working fine or not so this is a database so what i will do i will try to remove this third data okay with id having three let's comment the above test and copy this at the right test test two six and One more thing guys, when you are working with APIs, uh, if you find any issues, because when you are working in projects, you will find sometimes find very easy APIs, sometimes very difficult APIs. Okay, you, when the APIs are difficult, you are won't able to understand because sometimes documentation is not proper. And if it, documentation also occurs, you are not able to identify. Definitely you can ask me, but I am also not sure that I would be able to reply because the apis are developed by developers okay there are many customization and assumptions which are made during with the api so when we are writing the api test cases the first mo motive is you to get the document of the apis and then if you are not able to identify something then do please take help of your developers there may be case when you send the uh, objects in a form data in a parameters there are different scenarios which is not possible for me to teach each and everything and also it depends on the developer how they are developing their apis okay so, because apis you see there are n number of ways you can create the api and sometimes the doc it's not possible to write each and everything in the api so when you are writing the api if you find any issues in the document please take help of the developers you say you are sending the api request but it is failing you are keep scratching your head at what i am doing wrong what i am doing wrong maybe you are not doing something wrong you have something understand differently or you have limited knowledge that's why you are sending something wrong so you are getting a wrong request wrong response so please do take care sorry please do take help of your developers okay so we were uh, talking about the delete so i will be using given okay and when in type of delete request it is a get request so no need of type uh, content type of json type okay so delete we will be sending a delete request and whose url is this is the base url and the delete uri this is the one okay instead of id1 we will be deleting the third one okay so we'll be taking the response as well response and we'll printing the same okay so in the database currently we have three different types of data for id 1 2 and 3 now save this and run So, uh, sorry, asterisk. Anyhow, the command was executed and let me refresh the database. See, the data corresponding to the ID 3 has been deleted. So, this is how you can use the delete request. De what delete request does? It removes the corresponding entry from the database. Okay. So, this was all regarding the types of the apis and how you can send this now i will be taking some advanced sessions okay uh, we have seen that when we were sending the post request we have to create the body of the post method 
okay so we have created one but uh, normally when you are working in real projects you find the not so easy java objects okay so i will take some complex issues and will tell you how to make their objects okay so that's all for this session thank you hello friends so now let me tell you the main best part of this uh, we are using the json server it is uh, used for creating the rest apis okay so now suppose i want to work with more complex apis so the best part is i can create myself those apis and start working on it okay so for that let me make an another database which is having so i will making a copy to it okay and i will name it db info okay the name i am giving you will know it afterwards why name it i have given it db info or let me use underscore db underscore info now open this so let me delete this as well yeah and these okay and let me parse it so i get a clear idea if it's if it is right or wrong because if it is not in proper json it will give me an error yeah it is in a json format okay so in this uh, post we have id title and author now suppose i want a request which have more fields to it okay suppose let me give you i have an here info data info field okay and it is an array which is having a different information okay so this info in itself have email value okay let the email be info at the rate apm-selenium.com okay let it be the phone 1 2 3 4 5 six. let it be in the string only and the address the the address line okay so what we have done here is now this api in this database we have four titles four parameters id title author and info and info has further three fields for email phone and address now how what we want to learn is how we update okay how we send the post request now suppose i want to and add a one more new field to it okay then how it can be if i talk about string you can just copy paste and put slashes and your string would be ready but how we can do with the help of an object because it is quite complex in a simple case we have studied we have just created the class okay and getter and setter method of these and it was fine but now how to handle this so i will be teaching you that how we can handle these okay so first of all let me check it is a correct in json format or not whether commas etc are not missing okay yes it is in proper format if you expand you will see you have this and under info you have further information so let us create okay the object for it so let me name it as so for this actually two classes would be created the first class would be this and the second class would be this i will tell you how okay so let me name it as or yes 
new class and I will name it as post underscore post because the post we have used in before. So I am using the same name post so that you are not uh, confused. Okay. So underscore post. So first in this method, we have four IDs. Okay. So that is private string ID. The another one private string title. Okay. Private string author. Okay, and then we have an info, private string info. Okay, and let us create their getter and setter methods. Okay, so let us make them public. Okay, one more thing. Here, instead of string, we will be using info because for the info, we have a separate class. Let's make it till now. Now, make an another class and we will name it as a info class. So, in this class, we will be making these three objects. Okay. String, email, string. Private string uh, email private string number phone that is okay and private string address okay so first of all for all these three we need to create the getter and setter methods when you are using Eclipse, there is a very shortcut method for creating getter and setter method. Just right click on here and under the source, you will find the generate getter and setters. Click on it. So it has automatically detected that you have three variables here. So for which of these you want to create the getter and setter methods. Okay. When you want to create after the address and it should be private, protected, final, what you want. Okay. And you click on OK. So you see, a lot of your time has been saved in coding. Okay. So it has created the getter and setter methods that it is for get email. Okay. It is for set email. It is the similar way with which we have created before. Similarly, phone, get phone, set phone, and get address and set address. So, we have created the class object for this. Now, let's go under post. So, the four titles which were creating, this was string, this was string, this was string. This was of class type info. So, here in the string, we will be using info. Okay. So, here also, we can create a getter and setter methods. Okay. So use right click source getter and setters. So we'll be using for author ID and title. For info, we'll be creating our own. Okay. So click on OK. So it has created the getter and setter methods. Same. The get and set for ID, get and set for title, get and set for author. Now let us create the getter for info. Okay, so we will be using public. It is a get, so we will be returning the info class object. Get info. Okay, and what it will return? It will return info object. Okay, and its corresponding setter method. So we'll be using public. Okay, void set info and we'll be passing the object of info and this dot info is equals to info 
okay so this is how we can create the classes for it for this request we need to create two classes one class is representing the this four ids or we can say four variables and the another class which is this one so we have created two class corresponding to it this four and these three and now we can send a post request okay so for sending of a post request so let me write here complex post okay and the command which i will be using is this post only okay and let me create a test I will be using public void test and I think 7 now it would be 8 okay so first we will be adding info to this data to this info class so we will be making an object for info that is info info is equals to new info okay and we'll be using setter method to add data to it that is info dot set okay first i want to set the email so email would be webhub let's say uh, at the rate gmail dot let me use a valid <laughs> so let me use info only info at the rate info at the rate apm dash selenium dot com sorry for the background noise okay and we can use info dot set phone number let the phone number will be one 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 okay info dot set address and let me put it here address or in the address put me india okay so I have created the info object. Now I will be creating this post object and adding data to it. That is posts posts is equals to new posts. Okay. And we'll be adding to it that is post dot set author. Author name is let's say author only okay post dot set id the id let's say is 10 okay post dot set title and in the title let it be title only default text and post dot info sorry post dot set info so in this info we will pass this info object okay so all the data which we have created here is passed on to here so this is how we create the post data for our classes for our api now we have ready post body now we need to send this post request so let's see use given okay given when okay and the content type we have to send in the json object so we'll be using content type as json okay and the body in the body we will be sending an object object of posts okay so that's all we will be taking it inside the response object response resp and we would be printing the same body oh i forgot to send the post here i have to send the post request okay so what is the post request post request is this is the server address and this is the uri okay 
So that's the post request. So now we'll be printing it. Response. Response is resp dot as string. Okay. So now let's execute this. Send this. Run this as a test ng test. So it has successfully executed. Now let's see our database now. If we see our database, yes. Oh, one thing wrong I have made, guys. Sorry, sorry. I missed one part. Just a second. I will let you know now. Okay. We created this database, but we didn't actually started this database. The database which we are using here was this db.json. Now we have to use this db.info.json. So we have to stop the old database. For that, use Control C and yes, and now start with db. Dot info database and start it. Okay. So now, if you go here, your new database is started. And now send this request. okay so the same is added let's see in the database you want to reload it yeah you see a new data is added okay the 10 title as title author and all the details address india so it is exact added exactly the same way so you will be finding a lot of requests having multiple of these type of information like we have information here there would be something like this here and more information so in that case sometimes you need to create two three four classes for respective data okay so this is generally how we make the json object for sending in the post request okay so please try it it is a very important concept and when you are working with real apis you have to use two two three sometimes we in a uh, very big apis we even use 10 to 15 uh, class objects for a single api to send a single response okay so it is better you refresh this and know the concept how we have done it okay so in the next session, we will be taking one more very good uh, example to generate the JSON objects. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, we have studied uh, to handle the, this complex uh, post request. Now, study one more type of post request here. So, let me go and make a new database. And I will write here info advanced okay e e and c d info advanced and let me now start this database control c stop the existing database and use this database that is info d e and c d info advanced okay the server is started let me check json server yes it is started okay and now open the database okay delete this request okay now in this case what we were having in this uh, value we were having one info now suppose this info is of array type okay that is we can have more than info okay how we can achieve this this denotes yeah so how we can achieve this put the braces symbol okay this is the first one okay similarly we define the second one 
okay a comma here and the email again let's say test at the rate gmail.com okay comma and phone number is two 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 comma and the address address line line two okay so let's save this and uh, copy this into a json tree so let's check if uh, we have created a, a good json that no comma sector are missing and if we go in viewer it's giving me an invalid json so i must have made some mistake so let me check what the mistake it is I have to close okay now let's see yeah now it's fine now if you go under this you'll find ID title author and under info there will be two infos okay so how we can make a J JSON object for it so for this it will be nearly same what we have created here okay so let me make a new package and i write in this so that you're not confused classes dot advanced advanced example okay so i will be creating under this so let's start uh, the request which i would be using is this post request complex post okay this and at the test public void and the method should be at the rate 9 okay okay so now let's create the classes first so the first class first cast will be for this address info okay so let me create info okay so in this info what we have we have this email phone and address as we have done in previously so that is private string email okay private string phone and private string address okay let's create the getter and setter method using the eclipse very nice feature create generate getters and setters yes for all the three ones click on okay okay now it's okay now let's create a post class okay posts so in this post we have four id title author in this info we have info but in this case we have the info array not just an info we have an info array here so how we'll be using this we'll be writing st private string id okay private string title private string author and private string info okay but instead of string 
we have to use the info of the class. So we'll be using info here. And also we are using the info array. So let's create a getter and setter methods. Okay. Oh. Just correcting the identification. Okay. And now let's create the getter and methods for the info as well. So we'll, we'll be first creating the getter method that is public info. What it will return? It can return an array of info. Get info. Okay, and what it returns? It returns info. Return. public void set info okay and what will be passing we will be passing an object for an info and we'll be setting the same that is this dot info is equals to info and save this so this is how we have private classes for this object now write we should write the test case the test case should be well, that is it will start with given okay so or let's first create this info okay so here we have two infos so we'll be making two objects of an info that is info info one new info Okay, we will be writing info dot info one dot set email that is let me write test email one info dot info one dot set phone test phone one info one dot set email test email email one okay now let's create an another info object info two new info okay info two dot set email test email to info dot info two dot set phone number okay test phone two set address test okay this should be the address test address address to okay now let's create an object for the post request okay so or let me name it differently also so uh, it is identified differently from others okay and this info should also be different so it is this this let me import this oh it was using the old one okay it's good i updated it okay now the object of post post is equals to new post okay so we will be adding post dot set what we want to set first we want to set the id let's the id be 100 post dot set title 
let's entitle its v title set author let it be author okay pause dot set info and in the info will be giving an array which is of both of these info okay so how will we give we will make a new info object okay new info array okay which have both of these okay this info one and info two and it will be passed in an info array and info two so this is how we pass it it's giving an error set info new info uh yeah okay so we have this is how we have created the class object for it now we need to just and give the this is the main thing we have made the info array okay now we have to send the request okay so we'll be using given okay when okay and the content type content type is json okay whose body body we are sending in type of post uh, object so we'll be using post okay and we are sending a post request so post request is this one url okay and this is the post okay and take it into a response and print that response okay response dot as string yeah so this is how you work with it. You have seen that the size of your test case is increasing and as your API's length increases, the object you are creating also increases. So now how normally we work? We normally get this test data from the Excel sheet or something. And you can send the API, a number of API requests depending upon your test data. So we are using the data driven testing for the API's as well. So first let's execute this and check it's fine or not. Let me comment the above test. Save this and now run this. Oh, it gave me an error. Connection refused. Uh, which means. Okay, there is some error with the JSON. It's giving an error. Okay. So let me check. it was this it should work properly mm, let me update here okay and start the server restart the server first stop this and yeah i think it is started now uh let me check yes and let me run okay so i think it is executed fine let's open our database to verify it yes so a new title is added uh, id is added 100 with all the data which we have given test email 1 test email 2 so this is how you can work with a uh, post objects so only a lim limited java is required and you can start creating your post request okay so that's all uh, with the post request in the next session i will be telling you how we can calculate the api time okay so thank you
So let me tell you, uh, I have receiving a lot of questions with the students that how to get the response time. When we are using the or automating the APIs, the main point which the client want is that the time our APIs is taken. So yes, we can get, check the request and response and we can calculate the time, but uh, it is not so accurate. So what the REST Assured API guys has done, they have made the support to calculate the time in the library itself and that is accurate. Okay, So it was not present in the previous versions, but if you're using the latest jar files, yes, you will be getting the functions to calculate the time of the APIs. Now let me just show you uh, that how you can get the response time. Okay, so let me comment this test case. So I will be using get request. Okay, and I want to calculate response time. Okay, the command I will be using get and let use that posts to get all the posts okay and uh, let me write the test public void okay public void test underscore which test case it is we have used 9 so it will be 10 okay so let me use given okay when okay and let me send a get request so get request would be this one okay followed by post so it will return me all the posts okay and what it will give me it will give me the response So, I will be using here response, then, okay, uh, or I can, I could have used above also, so no issues, I am writing separately, so you can use wherever you want to use. Then, okay, then I want to what, extract, okay, time. So, this will extract your time. And the time it will extract in long okay so time so I can print out the response time is or and this is calculated in milliseconds okay so response time is time let's run this to find the time Okay, the response, the time which is taken by the IPI to give the response. Okay, you see seven one two milliseconds it has been taken. Okay, uh, there is an also another method you can use here only, that is like after the get, you can here itself write then okay and time okay and you can give time is less than okay should given when get this then and time okay for this you need to include a library uh that is the Hamrest library uh, for less than just uh, guys uh, I think it is less than mm. uh, it should be static org rest assured uh, 
okay uh, let me import the library import it i will be importing static com dot jv dot embrace okay i need to first include it into my pom let me check if I have included in my POM hamrest. No, it is not there. So I have to include the same. Let me verify. Okay, there is no ham request. But it should work. Why it's not working? Just a second, guys. Log dot. Oh, it's not. It's not com. I think it's org dot hamrest. Yes, that's why. Matches dot less than I will be using. Okay. So now I can use this less than. So here I can specify the time in milliseconds also. So suppose uh, the roughly time it was taking, I say the time it should be less than um, 10 and I have entered in long and save this. Now if I run this, it will give me an error. <coughs> the reason is that. The response time is 707 milliseconds and I am using the 10 milliseconds and it should be less than. So it has given me a res. If I use here 800 milliseconds. Okay. And if I run this. It is passed. Okay. The reason is that the time must be taken. Okay. Okay. Uh, it is 875 but still it passed because these are separate requests one request is this and the another request is this so maybe in this case the request time taken was less than 800 okay you see it's 682 so this time changes okay so this is how you can get the time or you can use the assert in your apis as well so that's all uh, with the API testing course. Thank you. Hello friends. So welcome to this section. So from this section we start with the practical implementation of SQL. We have already studied that SQL helps to maintain the data in relational database system. So first of all we need a database so that we can use SQL to manipulate the data. So let's go to Google. So you can use any of the database like uh, you can download MySQL for Windows. You can download this or you can uh, download the Oracle and you can work with the SQL. So you can download any of the database and you can work with SQL. Now. Oracle provides a very easy way if you want to run an SQL. Oracle provides Oracle Live SQL, an online database by which you can practice your SQL. As you can see, it is for free. So you need to create your account. You can go to sign in. Okay, so I am already signed in uh, because I have already created an account. If let me sign out, so if you click on sign in, you will find a create option here. So, create your account, a confirm email will be coming to your email. Just acknowledge, confirm it, and then after that you sign in into your account okay now on the left you will see a sql workbench 
Workbench is a section where you can write your commands. Okay. And schema, schema denotes the accounts, the database you have. So currently if we talk about schemas, we have let's see, these type of schemas already built live. If I go to sales history, so this schema has a number of tables. Similarly, the other schemas, but we won't be working on these schemas because we want to create simple tables so that we can execute our SQL commands because our motive here is to learn the SQL commands. So let's go to SQL Workbench and start with creation of a table. One point I want to pin point here is that this Oracle Live does not store the data. You can store your commands, but you cannot store your data. So once you are logged on or your session expires, you need to re-execute the commands. Okay. So let's start with creation of a table. Let me zoom it. Okay, now it's visible. So I have to write create table as I am creating a table. And what is my table name? Let's say I want to create an employee table. Now inside the employee table, I need some columns. So the first column I need is an employee ID, then the employee first name, employee last name, and the country from which the employee is. So I will give the column name I want that is employee ID and its data type is number that is all it is of number type. Then I can write a first name. It is of character. We represent it with varicar and its length is 255. Similarly, a last name and varicar. And the length is 255 and we have a country also and it is of our character type. With this run you can execute this command. So let me make a mistake here. Let me remove the R. So it becomes an invalid statement and I run the command here. So it is giving me an error. So let's correct our error. First of all, here should be where care. One more mistake we have done that it is not these braces. Okay. It would be the same braces. Yep. And let's execute now. You will see a comment here that is table created. So we have successfully created a table that is an employee and which have three columns employee ID, first name and last name and country four columns. But currently that table is blank. We have a table name that is we have an Excel name and three columns name but we don't have data here. So in the next lecture we will be studying how we can enter a data into this live SQL database. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Welcome to Helping Testers. So in the previous lecture, we have studied how we have created a table via SQL. Now let us understand the SQL. We need to add some data to that table. Okay, because that table is currently blank. It does not have any data. So we will add some data to that table. So let's go here. Let's save this. Okay, we can save the scripts, not the table. So let's save this old script. Okay, and let's say name is as session one. Okay. So if you want to in future use to uh, again run this, so just you have this command here. You need to just edit it if you want to make some changes or you can run it. Okay, let's see if I click on edit here. So you can apply the changes here from here. Okay. And you have the run option here. Let me minimize this. Okay. Yeah. So it's not giving the run option. 
or what you can do you can just copy this and again in work session you can just you can just copy and again put it here and you can rerun it okay so now here uh, in this session we will be adding some data to this table which we have created before so the command for adding the data into a table is insert because we are inserting the data into a table into where we want to insert that is the table name which we created employee what are the values okay so there were four columns one was the employee id so let's name is 1205 the next was a character that is the first name let us get vabhav and the last name let's say gupta and we have a country there india so and close let's run this so it is giving me one row inserted Oops. so sorry so let us add more data to it okay so let's the employee id now is 1206 let's name to be john and name to be wale and the country would be america let's copy this add more insert here the next id is 7 name is Chin Li and the country is Japan. Next, add one more. So we have an employee and one two zero eight, and we have let's say Sanjeev Yadav country India we are adding so much data because we will be working on this data so that's why I am entering it uh, let me pause this and add the more data okay okay so I have added some records and now click on run So you can see one row inserted. Yes, all commands are successfully executed. And so one, two, three, four, five, and one record we created before. So total six records would be created in a table. So this is how we can enter data into a database. This is all the SQL commands. Through the SQL commands, these are the SQL commands. Okay we are entering data into an oracle database okay now currently we are using this oracle sql so it might be the case you are working on let's say mysql database so for those the sql can be slight different maybe uh, instead of these commas commas may not be needed also in this insert into instead of values it can be value while there are not so many changes but i'm just telling you there can be some minor changes because each database have its own sql that is how you can interact with that database so that's all we have created added the data into a database so that was all for this lecture thank you welcome to helping testers so in the last section we have studied how to create a table and to add values inside a table. In this section we will be talking about various commands how you can edit your table. So let's start with delete table. Okay. So let's clear the session. Now we have a table and we have the data into a table. Let's view that table. So for viewing the table, we have command as select, just telling you uh, a simple command of select, though detail we will be covering in the later sections. So you can type select 
asterisk means to select all the columns from table that is our employee and let's run this so here you will find the reason is that yeah yeah so you will find a table that is the employee which we have created it has four columns and one two three four five six six data which we have inserted into a table okay now we have our command that is the session yeah that is before session let me go to so this was our command for this was the incorrect one yeah this is the correct one table created so this is all a command for creation of database so i have all these commands in my this notepad file also i'll be sharing these commands with you as well so instead of let's say going into this just copy paste it copy it from here okay let me go to my sql worksheet and again type paste this command i am creating the same table again so it is giving me an error that name is already used that is the table is already created now consider a situation that i created this table wrongly and i want to delete this table so for deleting this table we have a command the command is drop table and the table name employee and when i run this it will give me table dropped and now if i try to select that table that is select all the columns from employee table now employee table is already deleted now we are checking it is it deleted or not Let's run it. yeah it is saying table or view does not exist that this table is not exist because we have already deleted it so this is how you can delete your table thank you hello friends welcome to helping testers so in this lecture we will be talking about how we can add a column to a database using sql so let's see the table that is employee so currently it does not have so let's create so this is the command and just run it yes so table created now select asterisk from employee okay oh uh the reason is that currently we don't have data so it is not displaying so let's insert this data as well okay data is added now do select asterisk from employee okay so so it is showing a table here we just created now you think that uh, after creation of table that you need one more column here so how you can do it so for this we have a command that is add column command by which we can add a column so the command for it is alter alter means that you will be altering your table so that is alter table and the table name employee we want to alter this table and what we can do we want to add add now what we want to add the column right so the column name so let me name it as a new column okay or let's say name it as test the column name is test and a number what data type of this column i want suppose i want it to be as a number and then i write select asterisk to print the table now i run this you will see okay nothing actually let me run this again
sometimes it happens yeah yeah so it is saying me table altered now if i say select a strike from employee and if i run you can see here that these were the four original columns and now a new column which is added that is the test currently it does not have a data because we have only added a column not the data we have not insert into the data okay so this is how you can successfully add a new row sorry a new column into your table using the sql okay thank you hello welcome to helping testers so in the last lecture we have studied how we can add a column to a database now we will be studying how we can delete a column using the sql so this was our database in which we created a test so now we will delete this column so the command is almost similar we will write alter alter we want to alter a table and alter table employee okay and now we can we need to drop the column and what is the column name column name is test okay so now execute this it is saying table altered and now let's write select a strict from table that is employee yeah and the table has and the column has been dropped from the table so this is how you can delete a column from the existing table thank you hello friends welcome to helping testers so in this lecture we'll be talking about how we can modify the data type of a column suppose we have added a column and whose data type is let's say numeric that is number and now we want to update it to where care so how you can do that so this is our sql so let me create a table Okay, actually it's a fresh table uh, because I have logged in again. So that's why. Okay, and let me run this. Table is created. Let me add a column here. Right, this was the command for adding a column. That is alter table employee add test that is test is a new column and its data type is number so we have added a new sorry add test number yes it is right yeah it is altered okay now select asterisk from employee So you can see a column is added and it is of number type. Now suppose I want to change it to where care. That is a character type then how I can do so. So there is a command again an update command alter command. So we will write alter table employee. So we need to modify it. That is the data type. So we write modify table uh, column name that is test and we want to update it to where care okay and you can see the table is successfully altered so now what we are getting is it is of where care type now as we have discussed before also since we are using the Oracle SQL, so we are using modified. If you, you have been using MySQL, so you would have used the alter. Here it should have come like this alter column and then column name and where care. So there can be slight tweaks which we have already studied before that we know before 
that there would be some okay so that's all this is how you can update the data type of a column thank you hello friends welcome to helping testers so in this lecture we'll be talking how we can update the record of a table suppose you have inserted some values in a table and in future you want to update it then how you can do so so this is a table and we have four columns so suppose for this employee id i want to change my country or let's say change my first name so hi i can do so so i can write okay so i can write update as i will be updating a row update table name okay and what i need to i need to set first name is equal to added of character so the commas and let's say rahul the first name is equals to rahul and whose first name i want to make it rahul where employee id is equal to 1205 it is of number so we don't need the commas so let's now run this so it is saying one row is affected and if you go here you will see yes the name is updated for the record for which the employee id is 1205 and the name is updated from webhuf to rahul so suppose you can also update two columns so considering this only let's say i want to now update my first name as webhuf again and country as america so how i can do so let me again write update employee okay set first name is equal to webhuf and if i want to update any another column also so i will write comma then the row name let's say i want to update the last name is equal to sing web of sing where employee id is equal to 1205 and now let's run this so it is giving me one row updated and again the first name and the last name is updated that is to webhub and sing so this is how you can update the records of a table using the update command and we need to set the value okay thank you
Hello friends, welcome to this section. In this section, we will be talking about the select statement. Though we will be being using this before also, but let's cover this. So, in select statement, we have two type of select statements. One is the simple select and another is a distinct. So, let's see. We, uh, we have a table and we have been using select command that is select asterisk from employee. So what it does that from the employee it select all the data all this asterisk symbol represents all the data. So it is asking that from the table employee select all the data. Okay and if I run this just a second. Yeah, so it has printed all the data. Now, suppose if I want to just pr uh, print only a selected column, then how I can do so? That instead of asterisk, I can write the respective employee ID. EMP ID. And I can click on run. So now you can see only the employee ID for all the five rows will be printed. If I want an another, a column to add so I can write country and I can click on run so now you can see employee ID and country are listed so this is the simple select statement how you can use it okay Hello friends, welcome to helping testers. In this section, we will be talking about where statement. So if what the where statement does, it adds a condition to the SQL statements. It is very important and mostly used feature for in every query, mostly we'll be using this where statement and the select statement. Select we have already studied and now we will be studying about the where statement. So let's start. So there are four flavors of where statement condition. First is the simple where. So let's study. Okay, so let's print our table that is select a strike from employee. And let me print the old table. So we know that if we select asterisk or column name, it selects all the columns of that table. Now, I want to print, I want to select only the first row. That is, I want to select only that record which has employee ID as 1205. 
So how I can achieve this? So I will write select asterisk that is all columns from employee where employee ID is equal to 1205. So it will select all the row columns for which the employee ID is 1205. Let's execute. Yes, that's correct. And if you want to select only some of the columns, you can write employee ID and I want to select the first name column only. Okay, and if I click on run, it will give me employee ID and the first name. Similarly, let me just put on asterisk. I want to, just a second, let me print the table again. I want to select all the records for which the country is India. Now we can see we have two records for which the country is India, right? One employee ID is 1205 and 1208. So let's run this. So we are saying select all the columns from all the columns which have the country name as India. So select asterisk from employee where country is equal to India. And I run this. So it has fetched me two records that is perfectly right of employee ID 1205 and 1208. Now we can also use less than and equal to symbols. We are using equal to symbols. Now we can use greater and less than and greater than less than equal to symbols also. For example, let me first print all the table. Yes, so let's say I want to fetch all the employees which are having the employee ID greater than 1207. Okay, so I will write select asterisk from employee where employee ID is greater than 1207. So what it will fetch? It will fetch me all the records greater than this. That is 1208 and 1209. Let me run this. That is perfectly right. And if I write greater than and equal to, it will include the 1207 employee ID record as well. See, now it is given me three records. So similarly, we can use less than and less than equal to symbol as well. So this is was the simple where condition where by giving some condition we can fetch those number of records. We can use equal to, we can use greater than, we can use less than and similarly greater than and equal and less than and equal. So this was all for this lecture. Thank you.
Hello friends, welcome to Helping Testers. So in the previous lecture we have studied how we can use the where or, right? And now we'll be studying what is where and. So it is just opposite of the or. Or was saying that either one or two. Instead the and says both the conditions to be true. Right? So let's see. Let's print the table from employee. Okay. So I want to print a record where the employee ID is 1205 and the country is India. Okay. So as this condition is true only for one record. On the another hand, we have this record also which has country as India, but the second condition employee ID 1205 won't be true. So what we say here is select asterisk from employee ID where country country is equal to India and employee ID is equal to 1205 that is both the conditions should be true if we want to print this record now let me run this yes it has printed it so if I do it 1206 this employee ID that India for this employee ID the country is not India we know this so if I run this it will give me an invalid statement okay and if I use 1205 okay what I did a mistake country is equals to India and employee ID is 1205 yeah so for 1205 it is giving the record and if I use 1206 just a second yeah it is giving me no data form because for 1206 the country is America so for and statement with where both the conditions should be true then only it will print a record okay so that is an completely reverse of or or says condition 1 or condition 2 here it says condition 1 and condition 2 if both are true then only it will print okay thank you Welcome to Helping Testers. In this lecture, we'll be talking about the order by statement. So we have this table. You can see in this table, the records are the coming by their employee ID. That's first the record having employee ID 5, then 6, then 7. They are serial. That is by ascending order. The reason is that because we have entered the data into database like this 
but suppose if they were unsorted then how we can display the table sorted so for sorting we have a command in sql that is order by that is we want to order by a column that this table on the basis of a field so we have a field employee id and if i run this so i am getting this same table again the reason is that because it was orderly sorted and it is in ascending order i can specifically type the ascending or descending also if i want to make it the default is ascending so i can write ascending so the result would be same because the default layout is ascending also if i want the table to be in descending then i can write descending and now you can see just a second yeah so now you can see that the table is shown by the sorting which is done by descending order of employee id at first the largest one employee id then the smaller and at the end it is the smallest that is 1 to 0 5 so we can sort this not upon employee id but with the characters also so instead of employee id if i use first name and i use ascending Okay, and I run this now they are sorted on the basis of first name you can see a B C D so a is the first one then C then J so it is now showing on the basis of order by of first name not the employee ID so this is how you can sort your table thank you so now we'll be studying about uh, word that is known as top or row number suppose this is a table and i don't want any logic just i want that only the top two rows should be displayed or i want only the last three rows of a table should be displayed so how i can achieve this so for this you need to write select asterisk from employee where row num that is the row number is let's say less than three okay and so i print this now if you go and see that only two rows are being displayed if sorry if i write if the row number is less than equal to two so it will print only one row let me run this again one row if i light greater less than and equal to two why it is here yeah it is problem with this uh, database the live we are using we have to create two or three times sometimes so now we are using equal to so that's why all the rows which is less than and equal to root 2 that is 1 and 2 would be displayed so similarly we are using this is oracle uh, sql so we are using row num if we have been using my sql then instead of row num we could have used the top so in my sql instead of row num we need to use top that is where the top three rows or top two rows okay thank you